Saturday. You got to improve that, or you're you're going to triple insane. header today. ACC Network, NC State up first with East Carolina. No more Ryan Finley there. Then it's Virginia Tech, Boston College, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Tech allowed 45 points four different times in 2018. That's not being a ball. And then finally Virginia and Pitt. That great nightcap, 7:30 p.m. Eastern Time on the ACC Network. Do we have arrivals yet? Do we have NC State in the building yet? We'll see if we can get a picture here for you guys. And hey, yes, we do. Are making their way. They won nine home openers, nine of their last nine home openers. We'll see if they can get it done. That game about 40 minutes away. We'll break it down next, and then we get you straight out there for kickoff on the ACC Network. We're on the way back. Let's see if we can see Ryan Finley's replacement one time there at NC State. Matt McKay going to make his first career start. He's only attempted eight passes in his whole career. Let's get it to West Durham. Roddy Jones and Eric Wood will be down on the sidelines. They have the call coming up. All you fellas. He looks good, doesn't he? He does. Yep. He's ready. Everybody's bulking up. They're bulking up. Uh-huh. Trevor Lawrence is big, too. The triceps are. Go, fellas. We'll talk all day. Our triple header on the ACC Network starts here in Raleigh at Carter Finley Stadium. Great to be with Roddy Jones, West Durham. We're looking forward to seeing Dave Dorn and a new look Wolfpack. A year ago, young on defense, experienced on offense. They've flipped the tables this year. They certainly have. They lost a ton of production from a prolific offense a year ago. You're talking about a 3,000 yard passer, 1,000 yard rusher, two 1,000 yard receivers. But this guy, Matthew McKay, is going to get his first start under center. And I'm interested to see how he changes this offense with his ability to run. By the way, just his seventh career game as a NC State football player. And they meet rival East Carolina, who's got a little history at upsetting the ACC. They certainly do. They they don't like the Wolfpack, and they don't like the ACC, apparently. Having beaten ACC teams five of the last six years, this is a team in the group of five that's not afraid to punch above its weight against a Power Five conference. So Mike Houston makes his debut as the Pirates head coach today. Our triple header, Eric Wood, joins us. We start at noon right here on the ACC Network. He's got a good, he's got a nice play-by-play -play voice. Uh, oh, that yeah. West Durham oh, does. West, baby. Matt McKay looking to continue that quarterback tradition in Raleigh over the last decade or so of those five primary signal callers since 2008. Four of them currently holding down places on NFL rosters. That's always a good sign. A little highlight action tells you who those guys are. Ryan Finley may, may wind up being the starter for the Cincinnati Bengals. I know they really like him. Let's see if we can get a shot real quick of uh, some warm-ups. <laughs> Thayer Thomas, I believe, for NC State. They on the field yet? Yeah, let's take a look. There he is, 34 receptions, season to go, 383 yards he had, three touchdowns, but now he's going to have to lift a young quarterback there for NC State. You like Thomas? Yeah, I, I do, because he's one of the few guys back. They lost so many different guys. We got to get out of here, though. Kickoff coming your way in just a bit. So we have a game coming up here in like, what? how, how long we have, about 10 seconds? 10 seconds. Just about, let's see if we can get a shot of the crowd. NC State, East Carolina, Dave Doran, they're selling some, some beer? He, yeah, I was gonna say, he's set up t-shirts, he needs to have some beer, he he some beer in his hand. He has to chug them, right? That's <laughs> you the gotta deal. chug it at halftime. Chug man. it up, coach. That's, what, that's the biggest highlight of the day, I'm waiting for it. Get that <laughs> halftime buzz going on, who we picking? Oh, it's NC State. NC State. It's, yeah, yeah the East Carolina is, is well coached, I was there this, Spring, I had a chance to uh, go to their spring camp clinic, but uh, I don't think they're ready to beat NC State. They, they still have some stout defensive players and always will. I think our great friend, Reese Davis, all I've heard is saying, be careful when purple comes to town, be careful when purple comes to town. I don't think that's the case. I know NC State has lost a ton, uh, but I think we're going to see who those new stars are going to be. I'm going NC State. After I got a chance to see McKay uh, in the segment before this, the guy's rocked up, he's huge. <laughs> I'm taking NC State. I think he's going to be a baller. So that's a clean sweep right there. That's it like is. a man crush on that. Fellas, let's go take our seat. They both did. Game <laughs> right there. Let's go watch some football, you. boys. NC State, it is oh, game time, time yeah. on let's the go. ACC Network. Let's go! <laughs> 
We welcome you to Raleigh for the 66th season of ACC football and today a backyard rivalry with the Wolfpack of NC State and the Pirates of East Carolina. Well, for just the second time since 1900, NC State opens the season against the team they closed the previous one with Roddy Jones, West Durham. Welcome to game one of our triple header of ACC football. The tables are turned, Roddy, from a year ago. The defense was young a season ago. Now they've got experience. It's the offense rebuilding, and they're doing it with Matthew McKay. It certainly is. He's replacing Ryan Finley, a guy who threw for 3,900 yards a year ago. But that's not the only guy they're replacing. They've got to replace a 1,000-yard rusher, two 1,000-yard receivers. But this guy, Matthew McKay, is going to be the biggest reason this NC State team is, succeeds on offense this year. He's going to do it a little bit differently, a little bit more of a running threat. It's going to be a different offense, especially with Des Kitchings calling the plays now. Well, and McKay makes his first career start in just his seventh career game today for Dave Doran and NC State who are back in town after back-to-back -to -back nine win campaigns for the first time in 20 odd years the Wolfpack won the toss and deferred so the Pirates under the direction of first-year head coach Mike Houston who had an unbelievable run at James Madison including an FCS national title they'll touch it first and you get a look at the new Wolfpack kicker or putter, and this is Trenton Gill, a redshirt sophomore from Hillsboro, North Carolina. And Tyler Sneed will be deep for East Carolina. There's a look at Sneed. They played a year ago. NC State ran East Carolina out of the building 58 to 3. And away we go from Raleigh, and there'll be no return. So East Carolina and Mike Houston get the ball at its 25-yard line, and great to welcome the former Louisville center and pro bowler Eric Wood to our ACC Network coverage. Eric. Hey, thank you, Wes. I'm really excited about seeing Holton Naylor's take the field today, quarterback for East Carolina, a guy that was offered scholarship. Georgia and NC State, but his dad is the PA announcer for the Pirates. No surprise he takes this job here at ECU. Sixth career start for Holton Holt Naylor's. He's got Darius Penix as the running back. And he'll throw the lefty on first down and does so to Blake Kroll, a familiar name in ACC circles. His dad, Ricky, a great player at Wake Forest. His older brother, Austin, played at North Carolina. So right away, we see Mike Houston's spread influence on this Pirate offense. This will be Penix, and he'll be bottled up. Isaiah Moore, the linebacker on the stop for the Wolfpack. Well, Holt Naylor's is a guy that they are really excited about. Mike Houston told us he's got all the traits to be special. He reminds Dave Dorn a little bit of Tim Tebow. We'll see if he can play like him today. Pirates only hit 36% on third down a year ago, 100th nationally, and our first penalty of the ball game. That is Val Martin, redshirt junior, who got into the neutral zone. First and ten for East Carolina via the penalty here. Ehlers here to the near side. Catch made by DeAndre Ferrier, who's kind of an inside guy for them in the way they set this spread, Roddy. He certainly is. And Wes, this is a lot of what we saw when JMU came in here the first game last year. A lot of short passes to get the quarterback going. Holton Naylor's looks like he's getting in a little bit of a rhythm. Second down and six. Almost bubbled the snap, and Ehlers is tracked down and dropped. And that's Laurel Murchison. Big fellow at 290 pounds, making his 14th career start. He's one of the guys that they're really excited about on this defensive line. Reads it well, is able to react and close down Ehlers before he's able to get going. We saw Ehlers and Penix kind of mishandle a snap, even in a warm-up situation. It almost cost them there. It did. certainly did, Wes. Third down, five. Ehlers. 
Steelers. Quick throw inside, caught. And it is marked to the 49, and that'll be a first down. Finds on the back end of the throw, and Nick McLeod the tackle on a six-yard play. It's man-to-man -man coverage, just a slant to the boundary. A great catch by Vines, holding off McLeod, the big corner. He's very talented on this defense. A couple minutes gone, a couple of confidence building first downs for East Carolina. And another quick throw by Ailey. Another catch by Madrean Bounds, or Bynes rather, the uh, junior at wide receiver. Short passes, get your quarterback into rhythm. If you're NC State, as you creep closer to this goal line, expect to see them press a little bit more to try and take those away and make ECU beat you running the football, run into the strength of this defense. Adrian Vines on the last two catches here. Second and short. Ehlers cuts it loose. Backside catch. That is Tyler Sneed. And East Carolina moving the ball here on their opening drive to the NC State 31-yard line on an 11-yard throw. Wes, this is a team a year ago when Mike Houston was at JMU and, and Scotty Montgomery was fired the week of the game that had to kick a last-second field goal to not get shut out. Here they've got a great drive going to open the game. Taylor's 5 for 5, 37 yards. He'll keep it this time on first down. Big kid can run. And probably a little faster than a 6'3", 236-pounder would normally be. And those defenders may think he's, he's faster. Dave Doran told us straight up, this guy can absolutely run, and he's going to make people miss in the open field. Again, 6'3", 235, but you saw the wiggle there making guys miss. Ninth play of this opening drive now for the Pirates. Pass is caught, I believe, pro. Yes, it is ruled to catch at the 19 and another ECU first down. NC State brings the corner blitz from the boundary. Ehlers does a great job of riding the fake and then delivering a strike right to the body of his receiver, giving the defender no chance to break it up. Holton Ehlers is perfect. And here is Penix straight ahead. Close to another Pirate first down. West, this looks like a completely different football team. Being able to run the ball up the middle, Ehlers looks great, but here it's Penix, a guy that Mike Houston said they want to build this offense around at 227 from the tailback position. Penix tries to slide to the edge. Wolfpack right there, but I think it's enough to set up first and goal, Roddy. Again, going back to the run game, and here's where Ehlers' feet comes in to play again. Expect to see some zone reads. We've seen a lot of short passes. Those windows are a little bit tighter as you get down to the goal line. Let's see if Ehlers can punch it in. NC State, their defense looking at East Carolina's 12th play. And here goes Ehlers on a follow play. Fumbled the ball around the goal line. East Carolina says they've recovered it. NC State says they have it. And out of the stack with it comes Jarius Moorhead. It's a touchback. My goodness. West, they decide to go quarterback power. Holton Ehlers does a great job. Up until this point, just doesn't protect the football. It comes out. It looks like a couple of ECU guys had a shot at it. Ultimately, NC State comes up with the football, and what a big turn of events. Tanner Engel looks like he banged it out of there. So East Carolina, who was 126 nationally last year in turnover margin, has a beautiful offensive possession for Mike Houston, and they cough it up at the goal line. The Wolfpack's got the ball when we come back to Raleigh. Well, no score in Raleigh. East Carolina threatened, but Holt Naylor's had it banged out at the goal line, recovered in the end zone by Moorhead. And now, all of a sudden, here is Matthew McKay to get things started for the Wolfpack. Roddy, today he becomes just the second Raleigh native since 1950 
to start a ball game at quarterback for NC State. He tore it up at Wakefield High School right down the street. 2,300 rushing yards in his career. Ricky Person, first guy through. Kendrell Futel, Futrell rather, the senior defensive end to stop. And NC State, a little bit of tempo here. Auten Reef, the tight end, three receivers for McKay. He'll throw for the first time, and that is Thayer Thomas. Doing Thayer Thomas type things to the 41, 42, and a first down. Well, the guy just shows up constantly on film, and the ball just finds him. You see him here in the slot. Makes a little move on the slants, wide open. McKay hits him for an easy first completion in his first start. Person cuts back. Midfield inside the 45 to the 43 of ECU. Devondre Robinson, their best top tackler from a year ago, the stop. Well, the hole's wide open, Wes. I like the attitude to finish this run. Des Kitching said that his guy is chomping at the bit after Bam Knight got all of the headlines in the offseason. Ricky Person's ready to go and announce his arrival. Sure is. Strong run by Person. Plus field territory for the Wolfpack. McKay back across the middle. Here's Thomas. Got some good blocking on the perimeter. Looked like Person was helping him out downfield with the blocks, Roddy. They split out Ricky Person to the, to the boundary. He's able to get downfield and help up, help out his buddy. And NC State's got a little momentum as well. Staying with the three receiver tight end set. Put Autenreath in a slot now to the near side. McKay, and that is caught out of bounds by Emeka Amezi. This is some kind of catch now. So I think they're calling him incomplete, as you said, Wes. But look at this. Almost gets his hand under there. Even though that thing falls, that's a great effort there on the perimeter by Emeka Amezi. That's Person clearing out to the top. Pirates bring four, throwing for the end zone. There'll be a flag. If Person was the intended receiver. Pass interference. Defense to the 38. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Bruce Bibbins, a linebacker, got caught up on person here defensively. When you motion him out from the backfield, that means a linebacker has to take him in man-to-man -man coverage, and that is a mismatch that Matthew McKay identifies, goes down the field, and Bibbins has no choice but to grab on the person, or else he's, or else he's given up six. At least now his defense has a chance to fight to hold him to three. Person has come out, and the first college play for Zonovan Bam Knight in the backfield now for the pack. And here goes the rookie. Touchdown, NC State. So, Bam, how'd you do on your first college play? Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Nope. <laughs> Pretty impressive by the pack. Christopher Dunn for the point after. NC State takes the turnover and marches 80 yards, six plays, and the freshman Bam Knight makes it 7 0 in Raleigh. and Tigers were undisputed national champions. First champion of the 21st century, Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles. The Tigers reclaim their crown. James Carter up the sideline. Four touchdown passes in the night for Phillip Rivers. Tiki Barter might have a touchdown. Turtle by Jackson. Highlight real touchdown.
Back in Raleigh for season 66 of ACC football week one here in the North Carolina State Capitol, 7 0 NC State, thanks to the nine yard TD run by Bam Knight. But Roddy, NC State had a six play drive. They went 80 yards, four of the six plays, 15 yards or better. Including that, that pass interference penalty, we saw chunk plays from Matthew McKay going to Thayer Thomas, getting the ball to Ricky Person. Tyler Sneed here to the near side. He is going to bring it from a yard deep. Try to cut to the back side. Finds a seam on the back. 25-30 and knocked out of bounds. Up near the 36-yard line by Trenton Gill. Our sideline analyst, Pro Bowler Eric Wood. We saw Knight's touchdown run of nine yards. But there's an interesting dynamic about what Knight did, Eric. He did. He ran right behind new center Grant Gibson. I talked to uh, Garrett Bradbury, uh, their center from last year, Remington Award winner, and he said Gibson's a guy that used to joke around on the D-line about going and playing offensive line, and now he's his replacement. Great job on the second level there by him. Here's Ehlers, who hasn't missed a throw yet, but coughed it up at the goal line, and Penix gets the call before Isaiah Moore makes a stop after a couple of yards. Okay, Roddy, I know Mike Houston didn't want the fumble that's obvious but he's got to be pretty pleased with the way the offense looked in the first series going down the field absolutely and this is a completely different team than we saw at the end of last year they've already faced adversity but you saw the big kickoff return as well that can get your team going too Taylor's going to cut it loose and what a catch was that pro yes it was and a flag thrown behind it big catch by Blake pro Collision with Tanner Engel. 11 yard throw. Guys, that hit happened right in front of me. It looked like contact to the head by Tanner Engel. Wes, that's your guy, Tanner Engel. This year he Royal is wearing field, gloves and tape. Last year he was more of a down. throwback guy for you. Personal foul targeting defense number 10. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Previous play is under further review. Remember now, the new wrinkle in college football, targeting is either confirmed or it is overturned. There's two different types of targeting. The first is forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. That one I don't think is the one they're looking at here. The other is forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. That's what we're going to be looking for in this review. So Tanner Engel, the sophomore from Orlando, another look. Catches the pass, and you can't quite see exactly where that forearm comes in. This is the view that's going to tell us. I would say that's the head or neck area. There yeah. is an indicator there of an attacking play. So I think this is going to be confirmed, Wes, and, and Tanner Ingle is going to be disqualifying from the rest of this contest. Yep. And an NC State secondary, here are the, here are the things they're looking for. In the targeting, and we told you at the bottom, the new wrinkle confirmed or overturned. And dangerous hit that involves launching upward thrust or severe strike. Roddy, you and I sat in some meetings this summer, and we saw all different kind of angles and analysis, and it's it's a fine line now. It certainly is. When you talk about that indicator, a lot of times you can describe what you think could be an indicator, but you don't exactly know until you see it. And if there is an attacking manner going in, which I think they're going to declare that Tanner Engel had, enforceable contact to the head or neck area of that defenseless receiver by the letter of the law, this certainly will qualify. The, the operative thing is whether or not they felt like there was that indicator. Adam Savoie is the American Conference referee today. And he and his group are talking. The ball just over the midfield line, by the way. And then the penalty. And so, here is referee Savoie. After further review. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Number 10 may remain in the game. So no foul for targeting on Tanner Engel. 
So, Wes, there certainly was forcible contact to the head or neck area. What they, what we have to guess that they determined was that there was no indicator of targeting. There was no launching. There was no uh, aggressive contact yep. with the arm, forearm or any other part of the body. So, good for NC State because this is a really good football player that they're going to get to keep on the field. Holt Naylor still perfect, by the way. Seven for his first seven in the ball game, almost 60 yards. Ehlers cranks it up again. Another big lick. And a drop pass for C.J. Johnson, the freshman from Greenville. And who is it again? Number 10 will come get you now. Absolutely. It's a guy that's 5'10", 185 pounds, but he seeks contact. He played that nickel position, sort of a hybrid linebacker a year ago. Dave Huxable said he has found a home at free safety. Absolutely loves it. And the past couple plays will show you. Ooh, he'll pop you, too. First miss of the day for Ehlers. Quick throw again, and the tackle made. That's Chris Ingram out there in the flat against Johnson. You know, Wes, this is a little bit of a different look exclusively for NC State. They're going with a 3-3-5 three, three, defense, three defensive linemen, three linebackers, and five DBs. That's important because Tony Gibson ran that exclusively at West Virginia before coming over here. Yeah, Gibson new to the staff for Dave Doran. Dave Huxtable is longtime coordinators. Still here. Tell you what, when at West Virginia, Tony Gibson had some exotic blitzes, and if you're going to bring one, now might be the time with ECU rolling down the field. Ehlers cuts it loose, incomplete. And a flag down. Be a hold against the Wolfpack in the secondary. I believe they're going to ticket Ingram here. Prior to the pass, holding defense number seven. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Chris Ingram making his 14th career start. He had an interception a year ago and nine breakups. Just a little too physical there. I think he would have been fine had he not turned and swung the receiver, but when you do that against a guy like CJ Johnson, they're going to call that every time. A penalty sets up East Carolina for first and ten. Penix, a couple of yards, and that's it. Laurel Murchison kind of gets into the mix and then has enough wherewithal to fight back and get Penix quickly. Well, what this defense does with those three linebackers is it gets more speed on the field. What you sacrifice is the size up front. ECU has shown the ability to run the ball a little bit, but this defense is meant to be a bend, don't break, and force you to make mistakes type deal. Taylor's again broken up. That's Engel. Good pass coverage by the sophomore from Orlando on Tyler Sneed. West, by the end of this game, I think the entire ACC is going to know this guy's name. He was in the nickel last year. You see the coverage skills on a very talented receiver in Tyler Sneed. Ingle gets up after that play and taunts the bench, flexes on him. East Carolina's gonna know about him too. Yep. Third and eight. Bunch look here to the near side. Ehlers under duress and cannot dial pro. Threw it slightly behind him. Eric, this is, uh, this looks like to be the top of the range for Jake Verity, their place kicker, if yeah, they I try talk, one. I talked to both coaches before the game. They both wanted to get inside the 35-yard line or to the 35 to kick a field goal. Two talented kickers, and Verity has great range. He made a 52-yarder last year. This will be right at 47 yards. A year ago, five for seven from this distance was Verity. Junior from Bremen, Georgia. Kick is away, and East Carolina on the board in Raleigh. So the Pirates get points in their second possession. Verity from 47. NC State leads by four in the first. Well, Wes, of course, we're watching you guys, but a little studio update is pretty fun watching FSU football. EJ Manuel, too. Fourth and one. 
Cam Akers up the gut. How do you see it, EJ? I'll tell you what, if you're Willie Tacker, you can't be doing anything but smiling right now. You're looking for one yard, but Cam Akers is getting back to active, doing what he does best. A little slip and slide action there at the end. Jumps right back up. 7-3, FSU on top. Wes, back over to you guys. Jack, thanks very much. We got a good one here early. A lot of exciting plays. NC State and East Carolina, Roddy. Yeah, a lot of chunk plays. It's good to see Florida State opening up some holes for Cam Akers. He's special, man. He almost hit that wall like Jack Collinsworth, though. <laughs> Not sure you're going to be a friend of the huddle. <laughs> well, at least some of the huddle. Trent Penix deep to take the kick from Verity. And Verity kicked it out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team, number nine. Ball be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. Well, NC State, you might not have noted in the first possession, Wolfpack has one of the lowest percentages of returning offense in the country, Roddy, according to Phil Steele. Well, there's going to be a ton of new names for NC State. When you lose a 3,900-yard passer in Ryan Finley, 1,000-yard rusher in Reggie Gillespie, and, oh, two guys in Kelvin Harmon and Jacoby Myers that caught a combined 173 balls a year ago for 222 yards. Yeah. And 11 touchdowns. Uh, that's a lot of. That's a lot to replace. Wolfpack averaged almost 11 yards a snap in their opening possession. Here's the freshman Knight, and a couple of yards for Bam Knight. Sullivan, the freshman from Southern Nash High School. There are a lot of Eastern North Carolina guys on both rosters today, and this kind of backyard brawl, if you will, between Raleigh and Greenville. It's always interesting to see high schools collide in one form or another second and eight for McKay here's Bayer Thomas first down NC State out near the midfield line Daniel Charles the safety makes the stop An 11 yard catch for Thomas Night again. You know, Des Kitching said he seeks contact. He did there. Second down coming up after the veteran Turner makes the stop. Don't forget, busy week one of ACC football. Virginia Tech, Boston College are next from Chestnut Hill. Chris Cotter, Mark Herslick, Kelsey Riggs will be there. And then tonight, ACC football in primetime presented by Geico, Pitt, and Virginia at Heinz Field. Huge week one game in the Coastal Division. McKay to throw off the hands of Thomas. Third and long facing NC State after the miss there. See how often McKay has gone to Thayer Thomas. This ball just a little too far out in front for Thomas to bring in. Only very sure handed, but that one slips right through the wickets. Thayer Thomas is NC State's version of Hunter Renfro. In all game, he's been matched up on number 30 Stringer, the linebacker for ECU. They've identified a mismatch. Penix in the backfield. McKay to throw. And there's the catch of Messi. They match his forward progress. He'll have the first down or close to it. At the East Carolina 43 and a half, Michael Witherspoon was there in the coverage for the Pirates. It's going to take a couple of yards. I, I thought the forward progress had him closer to the 42. They put it at the 44, and here's State going for it. Surprised, Roddy? No. Be aggressive. You're at home. It's the first game of the year. See what your team's made of. They've been successful running the football. They've got an unbalanced line. I expect them to go there. McKay, and I don't think he'll get it. A helmet popped off a pirate, but he's going to be a yard short. It was Trey Love that lost his helmet. Big 92 here. And Wes, where that was spotted from the way that the sticks are set up, that looked like a full two yards. Yeah. So to go with the sneak there, I'm not sure NC State was quite sure on how close they were. Decide to go with the sneak, do not hit it. And a big stop for this ECU team that's been able to move the football, and now they've got great field position. Sure do. 43-yard line for Holt Naylor's Mike Houston in his first year as the Pirate coach. 
What a run the 47 year old North Carolinian has had. Built a great program at Lenora Rhine, also at Citadel, and certainly at James Madison. Hassan Howe in the backfield now with Ehlers. Quick throw and a drop. Vines couldn't hang on to one right at the numbers. Wes, I'm not sure he wouldn't have been able to take that for a lot longer. A big gain had he been able to bring that in. He's one on one with the safety. The linebackers cleared out. Ehlers hits him right in the numbers. I think Vines was looking at the touchdown as well. Ehlers started seven for seven. He's one of his last five now, but a couple of them have been via the drop. That's the tight end bird in motion. Wow. They tried to get running with Howe. And Aline McNeil, who was shaken up on the uh, early fumble, was having none of it. Aline McNeil, a guy that played linebacker in high school. Dave Huxtable told us that he's still learning the position a little bit, but extremely talented. Reads it. He's able to get in the backfield and put ECU in its own third and long. Third and long for the Pirates. Ehlers batting away at the line. Elias at 6'4 and 240. Got a hand up on it. Looked like he was looking for a receiver up the seam, but the pressure, the push up front from NC State able to get close enough to bat that ball down. Big turn of events there. NC State's get stopped on fourth down. ECU's got great field position, but a big stop Hold. for this NC State defense. So now the punt, Thayer Thomas averaged better than nine yards of return a year ago at a long of 40. And John Young, the junior punter, the first time out. Mike Houston burns one here. 7 3 NC State. Back to Raleigh on ACC Network. Seven three NC State. Mike Houston burned a timeout. I don't know if he's got any trickery in him on a three and out by NC State's defense. We get our first look at John Young to punt it away to Thayer Thomas here in a four point game East Carolina got NC State stopped on fourth and really two Wolfpack defense a three and out right behind it though. the way these offenses move the ball it's like defense has settled down young does get it out of there Thomas will let it hit and it is at the goal line and I believe into the end zone for the touchback 7 three NC State let's check in the studio with Jack West Florida State is hot James Blackman, RPO action to Terry. EJ Manny, what do you see? Listen, they call this man Scary Terry for a reason. He makes one cut, makes one guy miss, and takes it to the house. Florida State's looking good. Rolling, ever, rolling early. 14-3. Back to you, Wes. <laughs> Manuel. Manuel. Scary Terry. I like it. I do, too. <laughs> he keeps making plays like that, and it's going to catch on. Yeah. So, Tamari and Terry, the touchdown pass from James Blackman. Florida State a couple scores from the marquee names and Zonovan Knight starts at the running back spot behind Matthew McKay off the 20 here's Knight that's nine yards on first down before Charles the safety greets him once they've actually got two running backs so they had two running backs on the field number 20 Jordan Houston was split out Wide came across in motion. They really like Houston in space, but that time using him as a decoy. Bam Knight hits it up in there for a game of nine. Touchdown run for Knight on his first collegiate carry today. Here's McKay keeping it. And he hits the 30 before he took a big knock from Witherspoon. I'll say this, East Carolina looks a little more buttoned up defensively under longtime coordinator Bob Trott, who came over for from James Madison with Mike Houston, a familiar name in ACC circles. Played at Carolina, coached at Duke. Has been with Houston since the start of James Madison. 
Pirates numbers a year ago on that side of the ball were not pretty. First and ten. McKay trying to flip it down the field and overshoots a mess. Chance Purvis was going to make it tough on the quarterback to set his feet. Looked like he had his receiver down the field of Mezzi. Had he been able to set his feet and deliver a good throw, it might have gone to the house, but you see you able to create some pressure up front. Wow. Look at that. Purvis, a guy that they are really excited about. Former linebacker, got a lot of burst off that edge. So second in the full ten. Out in the flat, night a tough catch. Got a couple of yards. Looked like he pulled that in one-handed ahead of Smith. You know what? We got this third and long again, and we saw Bob drop before the game and asked him about they showed any of that 58 to 3 beatdown that happened at the end of last season. He just winked at us and said, we showed him a couple things, and this defense is playing inspired. McKay cuts it loose. Thomas, the catch, out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Long developing play. Three men to that side of the field. Thayer Thomas comes down just with the foot on the line. Can't come down quite quick enough. Good call by the referees that put right on the line. Now North Carolina State is going to have to punt. Stringer made sure. <laughs> yeah, he did. Here's the punt. Our first look at Trenton Gill. Drives it back to Sneed. Tyler Sneed picks up about 12 on the return. And NC State players shaken up. A four point game here and late in the first period. Don't forget the. And the NC State player injured is Cecil Powell or CJ Riley. I beg your pardon. CJ Riley, and that is a wide receiver. That would certainly cut into what NC State has in their depth in that area. And as Roddy told you at the top, when you lose Jacoby Myers and Kelvin Harmon and Steph Lewis, too, Roddy, you. You've lost some firepower, so any injury in that area would be a big concern to Dave Dorn. CJ Riley, one of the fastest guys on the team, the 6 4 receiver, tries to make the tackle here. Looks like he's reaching for that leg on the ground. You never like to see that, man. Guys, he's down right in front of me. They're evaluating his left leg. C.J. Riley is a guy that Giants scout on the field beforehand. The New York Giants scout said he has a lot of pro potential. He's six foot four and could run, and he showed big playability last year. Had an unbelievable catch for a touchdown in their bowl game against Texas A&M. they so are tending to C.J. Riley, and he's to his feet, which is good news. From what we can see, doesn't look like he can put a lot of weight on it. Let's hope that's not bad. Don't forget the huddle is our signature football show here on ACC Network. Jack Collinsworth, analyst Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, Mark Rick. They provide the weekend slate of games, keep you updated on all things ACC football Friday at 6 Eastern and Saturday mornings at 10 right here on ACCN and also on the ESPN app. Quite a collision of the big fellas. I think Jack Collinsworth went big game hunting last night with Eric McLean, it looked like, huh? The, hu the huddle is not a thud drill. That's full contact oh, right that was there. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a thud drill. Off the 27. And Penix, not much. Hey, on first down. Well, East Carolina NC State for a 31st time. Wolfpack leads the series 17 to 13. These two have had moments both ways over the years. And with Mike Houston taking the reins in Greenville and Dave Doran off back to back nine wins in a campaign, this is one that was eagerly anticipated here today at Carter Finley. 
Throw by Ehlers, broken up. Smith Williams hit him as he cut it loose. Intended for Leroy Henley. Boy, James Smith Williams got home one of the few times we've seen Ehlers pressured in the pocket. Well, they've been going with a lot of short passes so far in this game, but Smith Williams able to get around the corner. Ehlers delivers, but takes a beating for it. Third in the full 10 for the Pirates. Down the middle, caught. DeAndre Ferrier, first down, East Carolina, near the 45. It's a great job of letting the play develop by Holton Aylers. They drop eight. Ferrier's just able to find a soft spot in the zone. Aylers delivers it, doesn't run him into the safety. Ferrier makes a great catch for a first down. Big concern for Dave Huxtable has got to be maybe kind of where East Carolina's finding spots here, right? Absolutely. They've had success going man to man early in downs. Third down. Here's a little jet sweep. They're trying to get it in the hands of Josiah Hatfield. And Hatfield able to kind of wind the corner, but not a lot there. NC State going almost exclusively three down front to try and neutralize the speed at quarterback, I believe. Quarter break in Raleigh. NC State scored on their opening drive. East Carolina got a field goal on their second drive, and since then both have held serve at Carter Finley Stadium. Second quarter here in Raleigh, NC State 7, East Carolina 3 with Roddy Jones, Eric Wood, West Durham. Welcome back to game one of our ACC Network triple header. BC Virginia Tech, Virginia Pittsburgh to follow us full Saturday in week one. Here's Ehlers trying to keep. He'll cross midfield. Masseuse, Will linebacker on the spot. Holton Ehlers. Started seven for seven, Roddy. He's tailed off a little bit. And East Carolina has yet to have a run of better than 10 yards. It looks like they've taken away some more of those easy throws. Last time on third down, North Carolina State opted to drop eight. Expecting to do something different here, either bring pressure, play man to man. They're backed off, so may not be pressed, but expect to bring some pressure. That's Farrier in motion for the Pirates. Taylor has tried to cut it loose. It is caught. And the first down mark for C.J. Johnson. Boy, good play by Chris Ingram. Partisan Wolfpack fans not happy with the mark. ECU's had a thousand yard receiver in each of the last seven seasons. And from a talent standpoint, Mike Houston said this freshman, C.J. Johnson is the guy that he feels like fits what those guys have done in the past. Tough catch there on third down. Yep. Ehlers. Backside throw and trying to break away was Henley. How about this? East Carolina sneaky at the top of this list. How many people lose money on that? I know my man Justin Hardy, Freak Magic's one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, three of them. Oh. Not a record at Greenville. He didn't hold at one point or another and still has a lot of them. Second down. Ehlers quick throw again. Another catch Henley. It'll be a first down at the 35. Roddy watched so much success here. They tried to go long a couple times. Ehlers paid for it with a knockdown from Smith Williams, a sack. The short game's really working for him. These receivers have been incredible making these tough catches. The 50-50 balls, the contested catches. You've seen an attitude about these guys attacking the football, using their body to shield off the defenders. I've been really impressed because that's not something that we saw a year ago from this ECU receiving court. Penix in the ball game with Ehlers on first and ten. Wanted the pump and go. Now back here to the other side and beyond the reach of Johnson. Looks like he was trying to tee up Leroy Henley. Certainly was, and he had the first man beat. He was lined up across from Nick McLeod. Had him beat on the double move, but of course it's Tanner Ingle coming over the top to take that throw away. 
Adrian Bynes has come in. He's the receiver to the top of the screen. But the tight end Bird and Sneed kind of aligned here in the slot. Second in the full ten for the Pirates. Ailers back across the middle. Hard to tell if that was for Johnson or Vines. They were both kind of in traffic at the same spot. Well, Ayler, Ayler's has pressure in his face. Actually does a good job of sort of falling away from it and delivering the football. Huh. And Johnson's got a chance to run for a little bit. He just wasn't looking. Or, or maybe he didn't see it past the line of scrimmage, past those big uglies up front, that offensive lineman. Either way, it's third and ten for the Pirates. East Carolina three for five on third down. Pressure. Ayers hit as he throws offline. Aline McNeil, big 29, was chugging through. Well, Wes, you had two straight third downs where North Carolina State opted to drop eight. This time they heat up the pocket. Ayers feels like his receiver's going to stop. A little bit of miscommunication there, and NC State comes up with a big stop, setting up a long field goal. Verity will try a 52-yarder. This would equal his career best against Memphis a year ago. To try and cut the pack lead to one. And it's no good. Off to the right for Jake Verity. East Carolina denied. Still a four-point lead for NC State and Raleigh when we come back. Well, Matthew McKay today joins a list that features these other six guys, and NC State's, quite frankly, QB heritage is impressive, Roddy, when you go back to Phillip Rivers in the early 2000s, and, you know, you start looking around, and... It's amazing what they've done here in Raleigh. Some people call this place QBU. Flipped here to the near side. This is Houston's first catch. Jordan Houston, exciting freshman from Waldorf, Maryland. And interesting, it, he hit the scouting report that we got from Des Kitchens, the offensive coordinator. He and George McDonald share those duties. Talked about Houston being a space player, and there he was in space. They used him as a decoy previously, but man, they were excited to talk about this kid. Des Kitchings, Dave Dorn, all of them love what Jordan Houston's brought. McKay, quick throw, inside catch. Devin Carter in a first down. Redshirt freshman from nearby Clayton, North Carolina. Carter's got good size, 6'4", 212 pounds. Had one catch a year ago in the benefit of that new redshirt rule in college football. State will bring Penix back into the backfield in the pistol here behind McKay. Little reverse. Coming in near side to Barry Hines. Down the near side, inside the 10 goes Hines. Tripped up by Witherspoon. They're going to measure him out back near the 13. Welcome back to the ACC to Barry Hines as NC State gets into tempo. Hines, a guy that played originally at Wake Forest. And you see, look at the, the bottom of your screen. No NC State defenders, excuse me, ECU defenders around. He's got a cadre to lead him down the field. Knocked out of bounds just outside the 10-yard line. Big 74, McGirt got downfield. Straight ahead, Penix. Futrell, the tackle for the Pirates. Got to make our boy E. Wood feel pretty good, seeing the offensive lineman down the field, leading it for his receiver. I love it. Now we get the big back in when they think East Carolina's defense is tired. Here's McKay keeping. Got a yard out of it. All of a sudden, it's third down. Futrell playing great at the end spot in the last two snaps for Coach Houston's club. NC State 0 for 2 now on third downs here today. We'll pack a year ago, number two in the ACC. They were 11th nationally. Kerry Angeline, the tight end. Transfer from Southern California just off the formation at the left. Oh, they're going to empty it out here. McKay, catch made, incomplete. Nope, rule incomplete. 
Provillan. The redshirt freshman couldn't hang on here. Does a good job sitting in the zone. Matthew McKay delivers a great ball, but anticipating the contact, got to focus on the catch first. Wasn't able to do that. NC State still over on third down. 27-yard try for Dunn, who a year ago was 23 of 26. And the kick is good. Ten minutes to go. First half in Raleigh. Wolfpack by a touchdown. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Welcome back to Raleigh. NC State now by a touchdown on East Carolina. And you see the Wolfpack schedule here. And Roddy, East Carolina and Western Carolina at West Virginia. Neil Brown, the new man in Morgantown. And then Mike New brings Ball State here on the 21st. The way Florida State's looking, you better get off to a hot start before you go down to Tallahassee because they've got that offense rolling. A ton of talent back on the defensive side of the football. That could be a really tough one. Preseason word on the Wolfpack schedule was favorable. They were one of a handful of schools that had a favorable schedule. Well, you saw Wake with a big win last Football. night. Yeah. Florida State's really good, looking really good, so. Here is Sneed. And out across the 20, fumble on the football. Let's see who got it at the 24. And it looks like East Carolina. In fact, Tyler Sneed, I think, got on the rock. Oh. East Carolina dodged a bullet there. Actually hits his own man, jars it loose a little bit, and then a great tackle there. That happened right in front of me. It looked like Sneed had to wrestle that ball back. He felt terribly. He lost it, and he wrestled it back because it looked like NC State was in position to recover that one. It looked like 38 Will Dabs might have been the guy to jar that loose. So Ehlers off the 24-yard line. East Carolina just avoided its second turnover, and that goes nowhere. Hassan Howell trapped in the backfield. Ibrahim Conti. Comes off the edge, following the tackle. Wrestle down how in the backfield. Puts a lot of pressure on Holt Nail, which has been pretty good on the short passes, but when you get to inter intermediate and long, it's not been quite as successful. Conte's from Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx of New York. There's a throw on the flat. Sneed again, but they're going to get a hold here on Blake Roll, I think. He was guiding Chris Ingram out of bounds. Holding. Offense number 11, 10-yard penalty, second down. Old coach said out there in front of God and everybody. <laughs> well, it's not good when the seven ends up on the shoulder pad. Uh, that, that one's usually going to get called, Wes. <laughs> My goodness. So that will cost the Pirates back to the 14. And, you know, we were talking about East Carolina finding spots and spaces a little bit against the 3 3 5 look that NC State's providing. East Carolina's now starting to see NC State find some rhythm defensively. Ehlers back across the middle, intercepted. Flag down on the play. Brock Miller comes up with the pick. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number one, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow, ECU dodges, dodges another, another one. bullet here. <laughs> yeah. That was a great play by Brock Miller, who is listed on the depth chart as a backup, but they get James Smith Williams. The outstanding defensive end for a face mask on the play and it nullifies that interception. But Brock Miller on the field because they've gone with that 3 3 5 look. 
we're going to get a look at this one. Take a look right here. Here's Smith Williams. We're going to see, see the head of that offensive lineman turning. That one's going to get called every time. After the penalty, Ayler's the keeper. He'll slide down just ahead of the pursuit. Devon Graves came flying in. He misses Holt Naylor despite his best efforts. That one was close, Wes, and yep, that, that, that would have been that would have been targeting, no doubt. Ayler's actually kind of dodges it. And NC State dodges a bullet. Graves in particular. Yep. Flag thrown in the backfield. Penix will lose a yard or three. Now, is this a false start? Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. Second down. You know, Wes, it's been a fairly clean game from the procedural penalties so far. Yeah, for game one, very clean. And, but, but we're starting to see some of that stuff creep in here. You get the face mask, you get the offsides. You know, playing in game ones is hard, not only from a focus standpoint, from a conditioning standpoint, not that these guys are getting tired now, but it's different than going 24 periods in practice. Hassan Howe in the backfield here on second down. Ayers wants to throw, flushed in the pocket. Got away from one man, puts it up for grabs. It's intercepted. Chris Ingram had one interception a year ago, and he's got the first one of 2019. Ayers has a ton of time in the pocket and actually does a great job from of escaping the pursuit from the backside. But here's where it goes wrong. Just throwing the ball up, a 50-50 ball, his receiver can't get back to it, and NC State comes up with the big turnover. Welcome back to ACC Network. with we'll studio update. Florida State, new offensive coordinator they have. Blackman can't miss this to Neighbors. Tell you what, the nose are rolling. That's a great zone and running the catchable ball by Blackman over to Neighbors. 24-6 West, back to you guys. All right, Jack, thanks. Here in Raleigh, NC State by a touchdown at 10-3. Interception by Ingram up near the midfield line. And boy, Penix cannot get away from Futrell, Futrell who is playing great for Mike Houston's defense tonight. We saw the reverse earlier, and this is why you decide to run it, because that backside defensive end is pursuing hard down the line. And how many times have we called his name? Yep. He and Tanner Engel, if they had a nickel every time, they might have a dollar already. Four sacks, six and a half behind the line a year ago for Kendall Futrell from Winterville. Second, and now 13, McKay. Thomas again. Nice pickup for the pack. Close to a first down against Stringer, the bandit. Layer Thomas is a kid who a year ago, 34 catches, and three touchdowns. Amazing. And he's back at it now, four of them already today. Fisher in motion. McKay puts it up and just over the intended target, Kerry Angeline, the tight end. He had already gotten behind Smith. Offense is staying on the field here for NC State, but McKay knew that he had pressure coming from the field. Get a blitz from the corner. McKay's clock in his head, sticking nose. He has to get rid of the ball quick before Stringer gets him. And once again, just overthrows it, and now NC State runs out the punt team. Here's Trent Gill now, who won a preseason battle with McKenzie Morgan for the NC State punt job. And Tyler Sneed stands at the 10. Snap back from Shipko, a true freshman. And Gill can't get it to check. 
So it'll skip into the end zone. 10 3 Wolfpack when we continue on the ACC network. Well, Holt Naylor's brings the Pirates back out who trail 10 3 here in Raleigh, and the first five drives have kind of been a mixed bag, Roddy. Yeah, you've had a couple of really long ones. You got 12 plays, 8 plays, 12 plays. Fumble early. I mean, that one's tough. Without that, it's likely a tie ball game. This is a bend, don't break defense for this NC State in that 3 3 5. Darius Penix on first down behind the line. Go NC go State came firing in in the run game with Griffin. And Bolotapelli was also there. Big 99 on the edge. He played high school ball with Thayer Thomas at Heritage here in Raleigh. Prior to that run, they had done a good job on those uh, run plays of passing out of it with edge pressure. There, it's a tackle for loss. There's Penix again. And to the 23, it'll be a gain of five. Third and seven coming up. Look at NC State. Change what? Seven, eight guys here, Roddy? It's a whole line change. They started with the twos, and it looks like on this drive. But now you get the big dogs in Smith Williams, Aline McNeil, and Val Martin in there to rush the passer. Here they come after Ehlers underneath to Penix. Took one lick and then the second one handled the business. First guy looked like, was it Wilson maybe that got to him? I'll tell you what, they had the right play because NC State brought pressure. But a great play by, uh, it wasn't Wilson, it Engel. was Tanner Engel oh, once sure again was. all over the field. Oh. Went, in, went in down? Yeah, number 10. Oh, that's the call number 10's name. There you go. Three quarters of the world covered by water. Looks like the rest of it's covered by Tanner Engel today. Wow. That is a physical football player listed at 5'10 and under 190 pounds. Here is Young. Just got a wobbly one away. Thomas is gonna let it hit. And it takes a very friendly bounce for the Pirates to the 29 with four and a half minutes to go. Next Thursday on ACC Network, top 15 matchup in women's soccer. Number six, Virginia at home in Charlottesville at Clockner Stadium to host number 13, Georgetown. Seven o'clock Eastern time on ACCN and the ESPN app. Steve Swanson's team, the head coach for Virginia, has yet to allow a goal this year. How about that? Mm. Some defense that uh, a UVA alum, Becky Sauerbrunn, would be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> well, last Sunday, Florida State, Mark Kerkorian's team beat Wisconsin in overtime on an incredible goal here on ACCN. Pam Knight in the backfield with McKay. First down ball is caught. About a nine yard gain. And that was Rebecca Messi, who's been pretty quiet, to be honest with you here today. It's been kind of the Bayer Thomas show, and they've gone to the air. But Amezi, with one on one matchup, hits the slant, it's a catch. Thomas has got four catches, 59 yards. And here is Knight on second and short. <laughs> And he pushed it almost five yards. First down at the 43. Son of a Knight, nicknamed Bam. I love Des Kitchens, who said he seeks and wants contact. And I think the six foot, almost 200 pounder, you don't normally see guys at that size that want the contact. You don't normally see freshmen that want the contact when they get to this level. McKay going to cut it loose deep. A messy. A lot of hand fighting with Michael Witherspoon going down the far side. Yes, Ameka Amezi is wearing number three, Roddy. That is not Kelvin Harmon who has come back for the Wolfpack. He said that Kelvin Harmon actually wanted him to take number three. He wanted number two. Dave Dorn said, uh, no, we've already got guys that wear that. Take number three and took it somewhat against his will, but he had to get out of that 86 jersey he was in a year ago. Yeah. Clearly wanted a single digit. Second in the full. And 
McKay misses Thayer Thomas, and he almost hit Bruce Bivens with it, which would have been a really bad thing for NC State. Now the Wolfpack, who's 0 for 4 on third down today. The only real negative you see probably in the opening 30 minutes so far here for NC State. A team that a year ago was 11th nationally at 47% on third down. And when they have gotten pressure on Matthew McKay, he's had to rush his clock, has not been able to deliver an accurate ball yet. McKay looking again. And Amezi, I believe, was the targeter Hines. It was Tabari Hines. Out of the slot on the left side here. Hines gets one on one down the field. This is what ECU has done, and it's what JMU did last year when they came in here. They have challenged NC State in man to man coverage, brought pressure, it sped up the clock for Matthew McKay. He has not been able to take advantage now. 0 for 5, as you mentioned, Wes, on third down now for NC State. Five plays, and here's the punt now for Gill. Snead calling for and making the fair catch on the run at the 23. Gutsy called by Snead, but he didn't want it to hit the turf for sure, and that's where East Carolina gets cranked up. Just a 34-yard punt for Gill with ahead of uh, three minutes and 15 to play here in half number one. This, a year ago, was NC State's best quarter offensively and defensively, Roddy. And so far, just three points have been produced. The Christopher Dunn field goal and nothing yet for the Pirates. You're 0 for 4 on third downs. 0 for 5 now, that's going to hurt you. Penix trying to get to the outside, gets three on first down. And uh, that's the number six. Brock was Miller was there for NC State. Excuse me, Wes. This was an ECU team a year ago that was heavy on the pass, about 60% pass, 40% run. They've shown here today a real commitment to the run, which is what you expect from a Mike Houston team. JMU last year, almost the exact opposite, 60% run, 40% pass. And despite not hitting any 10-plus yard runs, they stay committed to it on first down. Taylors. Kind of a sidearm throw, and it's dropped. Anthony Watley, the tight end, the intended target, but again, two guys almost in the same line of fire here. Brock Miller, the linebacker who we saw with the interception that was wiped away earlier, in on the coverage, doing a great job of not interfering with the receiver, getting his hand in there to break the pass up, right on the hip pocket of the tight end there, Watley. Three of seven are the Pirates on third down. Taylor's flush from the pocket. Smith Williams sucks him. He had a half dozen a year ago. He wants double figures this year, and there's number one for James Smith Williams. He lit up last year when Eric asked him, What's your goal? How many sacks do you want? He said, Double digits with no hesitation. This time, Ehlers gets flushed out. He gets a little bit of help getting turned in. And Smith Williams able to clean it up. NC State burned a timeout after the sack by Smith Williams. So Dave Doran probably wants to get this thing cranked up and see if he can put one on the board and see if he can't double up Roddy, get one at the end of the first half, knowing he gets the second half kick. Well, that's what coaches always want when they defer to that the kick in the first half to get the ball in the second half. He's going to talk to his quarterback about the efficiency on third down, I'm sure. But if they're able to double up here, to put this game out of reach. You know, interesting thing in talking to Dave Doran, who starts season seven today in Raleigh, you know, he's going to see seven first-half possessions for ECU, and he and Dave Huxtable can talk with Todd Gibson, or Tony Gibson, of course. Three of the last five possessions have been three and out by a defense that has switched a lot of their packaging. And this defense early had the ball moved on him some, but has settled down, made some adjustments. He's got to be proud of that. Thomas out of bounds on the catch at the 46 of the punt. So a pretty good place to start for Matthew McKay. And the Wolfpack. Two timeouts and 2.14 to go here in the first half for Coach Doran's club. Back-to-back -back nine wins. 
You're on a list with Dick Sheridan and Lou Holtz. You're doing pretty good in Raleigh. And that just shows you how long it's been since back to back nine wins. That's better than 20 years since Dick Sheridan was here coaching the Wolfpack of NC State. Dick Sheridan did it in 91 92 last. Mm -hmm. That's how long it's been and, and the job that Dave Dorn has done. McKay with Person in the backfield. Going to flip it downfield, and this is Ricky Person inside the 10. Knocked out of bounds. Daniel Charles saved the touchdown. Little wheel route, Roddy. Every team has this in their playbook. You get a slant from the outside receiver, get your running back matched up on a linebacker, able to hit him on the wheel. NC State with a big chunk play to start the drive, and I love getting the ball to the running back out of the backfield. Get one of your playmakers in space. Big play of over 40 yards for McKay. 145 and counting in this first half. Fumbled the ball, they got knocked around, and NC State fell on it. Emmanuel McGirt, big fella, at the four. <laughs> Right place, right time, Dio. You think? McKay makes the right read on the play, but just a little mishandled on the snap. It looked like. Futrell. Futrell. He caused it. <laughs> had Witherspoon had a shot at it. So did Xavier Smith, but it ends up being McGirt, the big fella. That's Thomas. McKay might have been a busted play. Matthew McKay near the goal line, fighting for it. Does he get in? He does. Clearly not the way it was drawn up. When you have a young bunch of running backs, sometimes they go the wrong way. Sometimes when they go the wrong way, Wes, it works out. McKay does exactly what you're supposed to do in that situation. Follow the guy in the backfield. And he gets a lead block and plows it into the end zone. The run is four yards for McKay. I don't know how the assist for Skullthorpe and McGirt is going to work. <laughs> Who helped number seven? Well, the old freeze read, Roddy. You ran that at Georgia Tech, didn't you? Uh, a few too many times for Paul Johnson's liking. <laughs> I'm standing right behind Dave Dorn. After that play, he turns around to the sideline, rolls his eyes, and had a big old smile. Busted play, best case scenario. But like you said, Raleigh, follow your blockers and get a shot from the O-line into the end zone. <laughs> well, make no mistake, the, the wheel route to Ricky Person set this one off. Massive, massive. The running back position was one that, that offensive coordinator Des Kitchens was really excited about this year with Person, with Bam Knight, with Jordan Houston and Trent Penix coming out of the gate, getting his running back in space, set up this drive and ended up in a touchdown. And how lucky do they get that Emmanuel McGurk, Johnny on the spot with that fumble diving on him. Yep. Kick from Gill, there'll be no return from Snead. Now Mike Houston, under a minute to go, has two timeouts, but his team now trails two scores. Now he's got a decision to make. He could just run the clock out here and take it to halftime, let his defense play. I think you, I think you do something on first down that'll set you up. Maybe a quick pass, see if you can get a catch and run. That way, if it's incomplete, you run the ball a couple times, drain the clock. NC State's got two timeouts, so if nothing else, you pull those. Right. I don't expect them to be incredibly aggressive, but maybe a conservative call that if you get a chunk play, you go for it. Penix. And no chunk play for the Pirates, no game. Asus, the linebacker, there he is, number two. Just his second career start today, by the way. A quick throw and a hit right away. Whistle blew on that one. Old at the 30 yard line, it'll be third and five. Oh. NC State called the timeout. 
had the play been looked like the ball was caught and all of a sudden the timeout was called. Yeah. It's interesting that Dave Doran opted not to call the timeout after the first play, the run play. Also interesting, ECU didn't really drain any time off the clock after oh, they, the run play. Well, they stayed kind of in the tempo we've seen yeah. this first half. Yeah, so kind of got caught in between. Typically, when you go for, with a run play on that first down play in that situation, you don't get much. You let the clock run down, take it to halftime. But because they go fast, Dave Doran says, hey, if we can get a stop here, get the ball back with just over or just under 20 seconds in good field position, maybe we can take a couple of shots to get in field goal range and put some more points on the board. Yeah. NC State also came dangerously close to blocking the last punt. They may also want to take an attempt at that. It's a good call there. What's Mike Houston doing here, guys? On him, it's a quarterback runner handoff to the running back. Almost like you're in the huddle. First down for Ehlers to the 43. 17 seconds left. East Carolina's got two timeouts left. 12 yard run for Holt Naylor's. Ten seconds to go. Naylor's with a little bit of time. Now going to take the shot. Incomplete looking for Ferry over near the sideline. Four seconds to go. You love your quarterback scrambling around and create some time in that situation. But if you have an incomplete pass, after draining that much time, you only got one more play now. And there's the big fella defensive end, James Smith Williams. And showed up here in Raleigh under 200 pounds from Millbrook High School. And now he is 265 on the chart. Eric, after visiting with him yesterday, I'm not sure he might be a little north of 265. Yeah, he's a big guy, but they also said they got him at a 4540 in the spring, which is absolutely flying for a defensive end. A guy the scouts are drooling over could be a possible second day pick in the NFL is where he's projected right now. He might be uh, sitting on E here at the end of the first half. <laughs> it is a warm, warm Saturday in Raleigh. Yeah, I hope you guys are comfortable up in that air conditioned <laughs> booth. I'm down here sweating, guys. <laughs> Once again, Rod, Pro Bowl advantage. Yeah. <laughs> You're the man for the job, he would. Ehlers, final play of the half. Steps to his left. He's got to do something with it. He'll just take himself out of the play of the half. Will in. NC State. Gets a Matthew McKay four yard touchdown run to close the opening half of play here in Raleigh. Dave Doran's team with a two touchdown advantage. Downstairs with Eric Wood is Coach Doran. Coach Doran, what has impressed you most about McKay so far? Uh, he's just calm. You know, we got to catch a few balls to help him. We've had some easy drops. Got to make our layups. I mean, it's always about the guys around him doing what they need to do. But he's taking care of the football other than got a little lucky in the red zone. Yeah, talk about the play of your defense. They're flying around, you know. I mean, we're adjusting, kind of getting used to with the RPOs that they're using. But three points, you know, getting two takeaways, giving our offense field position. I like what I'm seeing. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, thank you. Go back. 17 3 at the half. NC State leads East Carolina. Back with Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Mark Rick in our ACC Network studios after this. Welcome to the ACC Halftime Hangout. NC State is rolling. Bam. Night. 
probably the single greatest running back name I think I've ever heard. <laughs> Amazing. NC State on top, 17 to three. So coach, this is for McKay. Right. Uh, first career start. Right. What do you like and what do you see? He started a little slow. He had a couple drops, but there was about three balls that were not necessarily deep balls, but it had receivers running away from defenders mm -hmm. and just missed them. You know, they, they couldn't. They catch those, they separate faster. I, I think they finally went up, you know, 17-3, but it was 10-3 for the longest. It looks like NC State's a much better football team, in my opinion. I think they'll run away from more in the second half, but until they get that pass, that uh, thrown and catching down, it's yep. going to take a minute to get Forgot it. Forgot to introduce you. Uh, it's Mark Richt, EJ Manuel, Eric McLean. What are you seeing from McKay? I think he just needs to slow down. I mean, the game's going to come to continue to come to him as it goes. I think, like Coach said, he missed a couple throws. He's throwing guys a little too open. I think that's part of his feet, just chopping around too much. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe maybe seeing the pressure, feeling some of that. But, you know, the good thing was he had that busted play. As any right. quarterback knows, when you have a busted play and down in the red zone especially, just follow yeah. your running back. Yeah. And the guys were able to push him in for a touchdown. So that was a positive going into the half. And no picks. You know, he's, he's yeah. not making big mistakes. So right. he's helping him a bunch. Absolutely. Thayer Thomas. Thayer Thomas is, is kind of... Big part of going offensively. Yeah, absolutely. He's been a safety net, and that's what you want to see a, a young quarterback have, obviously a first-year starter. Most of the time, it's a tight end. Thayer Thomas coming in there, four receptions for him, so he's coming up big right at 59 yards. He's your outlet. He's your guy. When stuff breaks down, that's who I'm looking for. I'm trying to get him the ball. He's done well for him so far. How big was that fumble on the opening drive? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the defense steps up. It's kind of that bend, don't break. Look at it. They get all the way down yeah, here, fumble into the end zone. Uh, but then the offense, you know, they get they recover the ball here. NC State's offense goes 80 yards and, and gets a big touchdown. But there's no doubt that this changed momentum and, and kind of changed the game for them. And I'll tell you what, that NC State defense has been striking the ball all day long. Yeah. Those guys are getting after it. They're getting after the quarterback. They're, you know, trying to rattle him a little bit. Yeah, so. Smith Williams got his first sack of the year. And yeah, sir. Many, many Hopefully more. they can get him back from, I think he might have had a cramp or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he was cramping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Number 10, Ingles, that safety. I mean, he's laying yeah. the boom. He is not afraid to hit guys, and he's doing well in coverage. So he's kind of a guy that I think he played a little bit of nickel last year, now moving back on the field all the time at safety. But he's looked really good out there. I, I think the biggest question of the, of the first half is, well, Coach Doring chug a beer at halftime. He said he would. He said he would. I mean, I mean, Got to be a man of his word. Are the fans in, are they out there tailgating again? Right. Where's that cell phone are of yours? Give back. him a call I real quick. Yeah, call him up. Shoot number. him a text. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said, right? If they he stay for halftime. He did say that. I'll chug beer a beer. Time? Hey, I know we're going to do it on the other side, but FSU. Man. Guys are looking Are good. they back? They look awesome. James Blackman looks outstanding. Uh, I, I want to say, e, you coined the phrase, the Browse effect. Uh, Coach Browse has those guys rolling, uh, throwing the ball deep, throwing the ball outside to the flats. Re receivers are taking three-yard catches, taking them for 80 yards to Marion Terry. We like to call him Scary look, Terry. Look, look, guys are getting after look, He's happy. Hey, look, a little grin. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of He's that little grin. I'm proud of that. He looks like me on Thursday. the same way when you talk about Clemson, so it's the same thing. from Clemson to Florida State. Yep. We'll dive it's, into uh, it. It's we'll fun dive watching into Florida State too. Yeah. It's oh, good to have them back. Oh, I mean, that's yeah. what we're oh, that's what we're used to seeing. The defense yeah. is getting after the quarterback. You got a freshman on Boise State side. He's doing his best, but the defense they're tagging they're tagging him. Uh, Marvin Wilson and those guys are you know staying around his face, so they're putting the pressure on him. I admit. I was really wrong on my prediction, it looks like. <laughs> Not even wrong, but really wrong. But uh, I'm glad. I'm happy to see Florida State looking like they're looking right now. Hey, bottom line, bet on the ACC. Amen. Always. ACC is rolling. So we'll come back. We'll talk a little FSU, Blackman, Kendall, Bryles. Uh, that team looks totally new. Take a look at some of these highlights. What is this? This is the pick? This is the Ingram right. pick, I believe. Yep. Right, oh, right, right, right there. there. We'll get you back to rally here soon. NC State rolling up 17-3 at the half. We'll get you back for some football as you take a look. This this run right before the end of the half. Get in there. Fumbles Heads it. Heads up play. And then right back right down the middle, that offensive line, getting it done. Football up next. We get ready to start the second half in Raleigh. North Carolina State 17, East Carolina 3. Welcome back to game one of our ACC Network triple header with Roddy Jones, Wester, Eric Wood also with us. The story here for NC State has been the first career start in his seventh college game for Matthew McKay. Yeah, and he's performed pretty well. He's uh, nine, 19 of, excuse me, 9 of 20. There he is. You see, he spread the love a little bit. Bayer Thomas gets the first catch of the game. He's gone to Emeka Mezzi out there, a wide receiver, but he's also got the running backs involved, too. You see Bam Knight 
with a catch here. And then the big one right before half, hitting Ricky Person down the sideline for a big game to set up an NC State touchdown. And even when things haven't exactly gone according to plan, Matthew McKay has been all on top of it. Running back goes the wrong way. It doesn't look great. Doesn't matter. Gets an assist from his offensive lineman and gets into the end zone. Again, ninth, excuse me, 10 of 19 on the game for 140 yards is Matt McKay. And this defense has been really good, too, after that first drive has really held this NC State, this ECU team at bay. By the way, the uh, completions for McKay, six of them have totaled 116 of his 140 yards. There'll be no return here for Penix. And let's go downstairs, Eric Woods, our sideline analyst. I caught up with Mike Houston coming out of the half, and he talked about second-half adjustments. He mentioned the turnover right before the half. NC State lucky to recover. They fumbled the ball on their first drive. That's a 14-point swing. He mentioned the wheel route. A linebacker miss a line, got to clean that up, and in the second quarter, simply be better on first down. That hurt all of their drives. I think Dave Dorn would say the same thing for his offense on third down, Roddy. He absolutely would. NC State 0 of 5 on third down. If you're going to poke any holes in this game for Matthew McKay, has not been able to convert on the money down. Bam Knight starts in the pistol with Matthew McKay. And a quick throw, Kerry Angelines the tight end. Seven yards. For Devondre Robinson, kind of got him by the shoe tops. Pretty good about this group of tight ends. Kerry Angeline, Dylan Alton Reith, captain on this offensive team. We haven't seen them involved today, but they do a lot of the dirty work in the run game as well. They're cutting loose on the backside of Messi near midfield. That's what they're expecting from the 6'3 junior. Hasn't gotten the opportunities in one on one coverage very often in this game, but here a great throw by Matthew McKay. Messi goes up and high points it. Big first down for the Wolfpack. Working against the true freshman, Jaquan McMillan. There's another first down throw. And Messi again. He had Bam Knight on a wheel route up the sideline, and I think had he been a little more patient, it would have opened up like it did for Ricky Person in the first half. See if they come back to that a little bit later on. Swap Knight for Houston. Thayer Thomas also into the Wolfpack lineup here for second down. That's Houston in motion. He'll get it on the sweep. And nice play in space. Boy, Kendall Futrell has been outstanding at the end spot today for East Carolina. Against a guy that they are really excited about getting the ball in space, but Kenny Futrell defeats a cut block and sets up a third and medium for the Wolfpack, but we have called his name a number of times tonight. Here's the uh, blemish in the first half for State. The 0 for 5 on third down. Blitz across the middle, Angeline couldn't hang on. Might have been thrown slightly behind the big tight end. And they have really heat up the pocket on third downs because Matthew McKay has not been able to respond. This time they bring a little cross blitz from the linebackers. McKay sees it coming right in his face. The ball's behind Angeline. And ECU able to get off the field on third downs. First game for Trent Gill to punt. A.J. Cole was a stalwart on the special teams side for NC State the last few years. He played in 52 career games. It's almost as many as Roddy played in Atlanta. End over end kick by Gill, and the pack can't get to it. So East Carolina will get to play from its 20 to start their first possession. And Eric, I got to believe, uh, based on Mike Houston's comments, this is a, it's a pretty premium set of downs here for the Pirates. It is, and they want to get started off fast on first down here, but the Pirates are coming out in the second half with a lot of confidence. Mike Houston loves the way his teammate, his team came out very aggressive, not afraid of the moment, not afraid of the stadium. This young team is performing well, just has to limit the turnovers. A lot of balls from Aylers, 28 of them. He started seven for seven, finished nine of 21. When they were having success on first down, they were getting those short completions. Penix, the 
was able to dodge the first two red shirts, but not the third one. And Smith Williams, who we saw come out at the end of the first half, was able to kind of collapse that edge for Darius Penix, the big 227 pound junior running back who comes out of the ball game and Hassan Howell gets plugged in. A little different type, 5'9", 180. Pack shows blitz, Ayers cuts it loose, roll the catch short of the first down. Chris Ingram, who had the interception in the first half, makes the stop at the 28, it'll be third down and two. Getting to these third and manageable situations is gonna be huge in the second half because it opens up your playbook so much. NC State has shown that they'll bring pressure, they'll drop eight. In these situations, the ability to have a running quarterback, we really haven't seen Ehlers escape on a third down very often to pick up a first. So we'll see if we see that a little bit more here. Pirates four of nine on third down. And the throw is dropped, that was Sneed. Again, slightly behind him. And number 10 was lurking for State. He's all over the place. Is Tanner Engel the free safety? But again, NC State decides to bring pressure. They bring six. They're able to force Ehlers off his spot a little bit. He had Hassan Howell out in the, in the flat. Wasn't able to find him. The throw's a little behind the receiver. Again, pressure forces a mistake on third down. Eric, I can't tell you how disappointed I am that Ingles got like gloves and tape on. That's all, that's all you talked about all I week. Know. But I'll tell you what, he's still playing like an old school player. He is smacking guys, and I can hear it from the sidelines down here. Backing up is Thomas on the punt. Bayer Thomas trying to find a crease. Knocked out of bounds around. The 30 yard line. Second possession coming up for the Wolfpack and Raleigh with a two touchdown lead. Well, we've talked about him a lot today. The free safety for NC State. Tanner Engel has been all over the field. Had a close call early. This was called targeting, but reversed upon review, and he has been all over the place, making plays on running backs, separating receivers from the ball. Great in coverage, and you know what? It's a rivalry game. So talk some smack over there on the sideline. He's done that too. 44 tackles a year ago. That ball is double clutched by Tabari Hines at the line of scrimmage. And no gain on the crossing route. Second down and 10. And Justin Witt. The most veteran of the three offensive line starters is down. So we will step aside. Almost four minutes gone here in the third. And Witt. So he will be able to make his way off the field. So we will stay here at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. The pack with a two touchdown lead. And Jordan Houston has come in here for second down and 10. Tight end with a bunch look here. Now Houston clears, and McKay gets it to him. Trying to read the block in front, and he got five out of what might have been about a three-yard loss. The reason they love him is his ability to make guys miss in space. And Des Kitchens talked to us about the fact that he came in and he wasn't scared, even though he's listed 185 pounds, runs a little more physical than you'd anticipate. We'll see some more of that as the season goes on. This young man's got a special, special future here in red and white. All right, 0 for 6 is NC State. And they're going to bring Trent Penix in now for third down. Kate claps his hands and the snap. Looking for Hines. There's a third down pickup for the pack to midfield. Stringer was over there defensively. Pretty good throw here by Matthew McKay. Great throw. And you get Hines in the slot against the cornerback in man-to-man -man coverage against that nickel. McKay's able to set his feet, deliver a strike, and move the chains. McKay going to cut it loose, and Hines is open. Tabari Hines. 
will score. Lindsay State fans have seen Tabari Hines do it against their team when he had on the black and gold of Wake Forest. Young man who transferred to Oregon, played four games last year. Comes to NC State back to the ACC and pays dividends. Big third down conversion, goes down for a touchdown. Done the point after. Four plays, 70 yards in 148. And Matthew McKay throws 48 yards to Tabari Hines. Wolfpack in front. Now you talk about greats in Raleigh. Yeah. Look here now. Big game 81. Mm. This was the man. Now wait, was that Terrence? <laughs> no, no, this is Tori. Terrence was the one that did all, he was on the defense. So he was knocking was guys out and blocking all the kicks. There you go. This that. is 81. This is big game 81 right well, here, Roddy. This Roddy. is just me in the backyard. This, this is football. one of the greatest wide receivers in <laughs> ACC history. Well, look, you could have showed the seven touchdowns in two years against Florida State. Just run that on the hoop and I'd have I'm happy. telling you, like, speaking of that, I, I, I said that in itself should have had me on the first team all ACC team. <laughs> Instead By of the way. Peter Warwick and Calvin Instead, Johnson. And, and I love Peter and Calvin. Uh, oh, wait a second. You know, 21's our guy now. now Pete, I know. I'm not arguing with Peter Warwick. Look, I love Calvin. <laughs> Great to have Tori Holt yeah. with us. He's going to stay with us as the flag goes down. This is Sneed on the kick return. Coming back down the field for East Carolina. Tyler Sneed tries to cut back. He'll be tackled inside the five. We're going to see where this goes. Trenton Gill, who handled the kicks, made the tackle. And it's a block in the back on the Pirates to negate a 93-yard return. Mm. During the return, legal block in the back, receiving team number 81. After this was to the goal, first down. So deep in territory. We get a look at this one, Roddy. A lot of times when you have these returns, there it is, right in the middle of your screen. It's a little extra push. That's all it takes to throw a defender off. And these kickoff returns, you're in the open field. It's an easy call for the refs. Andre Pagis, the guy that was guilty mm. of the infraction. Okay, Tori, able to come watch the alma mater. You yep. live here in the Raleigh area. Yep. What have you seen from Dave Doran's team in the first half? You like because after back-to-back -back nine wins, there's some real expectations. Yeah, you know what? You know, I, I, I've been over to practice pretty much all week and um, saw him in training camp and talked to Coach Doran about how young they were. He was just hoping that he could get them to run the, run the right way. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're a very talented football team. Uh, the young at the quarterback position. It's good to see McKay getting some playing time. It's a nice ball that he threw right there for a touchdown. But I'm impressed. I like what I, I like what I see with Coach Doran and how they're building this roster. Straight ahead, Penix. Not much there, second down. Now, Tori, you were a great receiver here. That it had a couple of really good ones here last year. Kelvin Harmon yeah. and Jacoby Myers. What have you seen from this receiving core today that gives you some hope? Well, you know, I like a Mecca Measy. You know, he's, he, he saw what how Harmon and Jacoby and those guys work, so it carried over to his play. You got Thera Thomas, who I coached in high school. You know, yeah. Thera was over here at his high school. I coached him, so I know he's coached the right way. He knows how to play the position. He knows what to expect. And then C.J. Riley, who's 6'3", who's 6'4", six, six, the fastest guy on the team. I think he's a 4'3 guy. Hmm. He went out early in the game, but he's talented. There. But there's also a couple freshmen, too. The Ladson kid, number 85, out of Charlotte, is really good. I mean, he's had an outstanding training camp. You saw Hines right there show his elusiveness. Uh, played at Wake and went over to Oregon and now here, here back find himself back in the ACC. So there's a lot of talent on the offensive side of position, particularly at the skill skill spot. And I like all these guys. And they get an op they get an opportunity to be coached by Coach McDonald, who's on them, who, uh, who who coaches them hard, talks to them about the details. And then I get a chance to come around as well and kind of also add my expertise on how to play the position. So this this uh, this receiver group is in good hands. They're they're young and they're growing. Well, the thing too that is interesting. Now, after the building and the patience that folks have had while Coach Doran's rebuilt this thing, yeah. now all of a sudden, the talent and the recruiting the last three years, you know, Tori, that's, that's re-engineered everything. It's, it's re-energized it's re 
this program is re-energized re the fan base, the former players. Right. He is out here attacking these streets in terms of coming, going out and getting these players. And the way they go about recruiting, recruiting is totally different than what it was when I was playing. But these guys have a really good control of it. Dez Kitchens is one of the top recruiters in the country. Yeah. Uh, he gets out and does a really good job. But going out and getting the in-state talent, yep. first and foremost, which he's done a phenomenal job of, and then, and then also getting guys that are not from the area. And you see a lot of local talent, as you saw in, in McKay, that's out here starting for the Wolfpack. Third and short, Hassan Howe. And he will have the first down. Pulled down at the 24 by Ingram. I think, I, I was going to say, I, also, I think for me, too, too, was when you have 17, 18, 19 freshmen that want to get to the university early right. and get involved in the program, that speaks volumes to me about the program and Dave Doran and the direction where he's taking us. Guys want to get here early, and freshmen feel like they can come here and compete and have an opportunity to play as true freshmen. There's a throw to the far side, broken up across the way. Nick McLeod breaking on a ball intended for Henley. Nick McLeod almost got him one there. But, Tori, you mentioned being around this receiving court. Do you ever tell these guys how good they have it with these spread offenses and throw the ball all over the place? Yeah, <laughs> when you play, I mean, I know you would have enjoyed getting some of that. Oh, luck. absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's the game is set up for the skill guys to really succeed. And these guys understand that, and they're taking, you know, to their credit, they're taking advantage of it. I would love to play. I love when I play. I would have I loved to have played in any era. But the way the rules are now and how receivers can get up on Nice sack right there. Yep. Nice Isaiah sack. Moore. I, and Isaiah Moore. And this linebacker group. I mean, and you, you talk about Drake, Drake Thomas, who's a, who's a young freshman. I coached also at Heritage. Paxton, uh, is it uh, number 11? I, can't, I always get his name mixed up. But the redshirt first had a, had an ACL. Hey, Wilson. Hey, Wilson. I mean, yeah, Wilson. Yep. Also, Isaiah, the Moore kid. I mean, this linebacker group is also talented, talented as well for the Wolfpack. Big sack there. Now, all of a sudden, third and very long. Almost 20 for the Pirates. Pressured again Screen. as Ehlers. Here's Howe trying to find some room, and he'll be tackled up around the 30. That was a big oh, fella, number 97. Xavier Lias getting down the field, right, making that tackle from behind. Great, Great effort. effort. Yes. And, and McLeod and, shaking up. And, and that's guys. the kind of effort you need, right? And, and Coach Doran talks to this football team all the time about effort, giving relentless effort every single play. And you saw that right there by 97 Lias. Dave Huxtable told us well, this is the fastest defense he's had, which is part of the reason mm -hmm. they've gone to this sort of 3 3 5 look, getting those linebackers on the field. But there you see the athleticism from the defensive linemen. They're long, they're fast, and, you know, they, they made some upgrades and brought some guys in to help with the. With the cornerback position is as competition in that position. So what I like is there's competition through and through this roster. We're gonna get a timeout. Great to see you, my Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Always. One of the legends of the ACC. Yes, sir. Tory Holt of NC State. Go Pack. Stay tuned. Three touchdown lead in the pack. Getting ready to get the ball back. College football playoff lives on ESPN. Three touchdown lead in Raleigh for NC State, 24 to three. With Roddy Jones, Eric Wood, Wes Durham, our great crew. And the Pirates to punt out of the timeout. Called by Dave Dorn a moment ago. Fired out of there by Young. Thayer Thomas inside the 20. Could not quite step away. And that was Pagis, who had the block in the back on the unbelievable kick return by Sneed, a 50 yard punt by Young. Don't forget, 4 o'clock Eastern, Chris Cotter, Mark Herzlick, Kelsey Riggs standing by at Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill. Very interesting game, Roddy, with Virginia Tech, BC, and then tonight, ACC Network Primetime Football presented by Geico. Adam Amin joins Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George at Heinz Field. Somebody puts a flag in the ground of the Coastal Division tonight. Will it be Virginia or Pittsburgh? Wes, you talk about uh, early season mistakes. One of the things that we saw, and we saw it last weekend, was uh, one of those things that suffers is tackling early in the year. Yeah. If Virginia Tech struggles with that at all, A.J. Dillon's going to have a big day. Bam Knight is the single back. First down carry. Almost stepped out of one there. Stringer got just enough of the rookie who scored today on his first collegiate carry. Who 
The Wolfpack are in control of this game, but they have had key injuries to three of their guys. C.J. Riley will not return with a knee injury. Justin Witt is out, and Nick McLeod went down on the field after that last series in a lot of pain. Got off the field, but he was on the sideline in a lot of pain. Here's a sweep, and this is Houston. Cutting around the corner, Jordan Houston, midfield, and more. Stringer again might have saved the touchdown. They've done a good job getting him the ball. When they get in that running back room on Monday or tomorrow, whenever they do it, they're going to tell these guys to tie their shoelaces a little tighter because on the last play, Bam Knight, a shoelace tackle gets him, and Jordan Houston almost got out of there. They have done a good job of getting him the ball, Wes. And, but that's what they said they were going to do, line him up all over the field, find a way to give him the ball in space. Knight drops out into coverage. Here's McKay looking to throw. Now he'll battle upfield in room. First down for McKay, who takes the slide. Short of the first down. They're going to measure his start of the slide at the 39. And a flag down as well. Number 62, 10-yard penalty. First down. Bryson Spees, the 290-pound redshirt sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina, with the hold. Sometimes it's tough for those offensive linemen to know exactly where the quarterback is when you have a mobile guy. So when he starts to climb in the pocket, you've got to disengage. Wraps around, and that jersey starts to tug. It is difficult. E. Wood, you played with some mobile quarterbacks. I was just going to say, Roddy, thank you so much for defending the offensive line. I absolutely love it. Interesting that Spees comes in the game. The backup tackle to Witt on the depth chart is Timothy McKay, Matthew's younger brother. After the penalty, here's McKay. And there's Thayer Thomas again. Ball pop loose. Was he ruled down or not? Well, they're going to call it a live ball that was recovered by Angeline, the tight end. Wow. So Kerry Angeline might have saved the possession there for NC State. NC State's had a number of them hit the ground, and they've recovered every single one, especially down near the goal line. They have been living right over the course of this offseason, getting a couple bounces. Saw another one there. McKay on second down. A messy. Oh, what a tough catch. And he did it against the freshman McMillan. McMillan has really held his own today against the Mecca Mezzi, but there's nothing you can do there when the quarterback puts it up high, receiver goes up and snags it. And that is a six foot three receiver, Amezi, against McMillan, who's listed at 5'10. Knight is the running back in the strong eye look here. Wow. Alex Turner making his 20th career start today. Got to Bam Knight in the first step. Wes, I've been a freshman in these games, and uh, all of them. Have a welcome to college football moment. Alex Turner made sure that Bam Knight got his on that third down play. Wow. Alex Turner is the most productive D lineman returning for the Pirates. He had 10 and a half tackles for loss last year. He's been relatively quiet here today. Haven't called his name a whole lot, but when you have a guy with that sort of experience, it's only a matter of time before he gets you for one. Shipko, the true freshman, has been spot on today with the punts in terms of the snaps. Roddy, we talked about that before the ball game. You're asking a true freshman, Joe Shipko, to come in and handle the long snapping duties. That's not as easy as it sounds. Well, the fact that we haven't mentioned his name until right now as a compliment yep. is a good thing. Well, don't forget the huddle is our signature football show here on the ACC Network. Friday nights at 6 and Saturday at 10 to get you ready for kickoff. Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick, a full preview of the weekend schedule, updated on all things ACC football. Join the guys in the huddle. They're also in studio today. They got the best seat in the house for busy, busy week one of ACC football. How fired up do you think E.J. Manuel is right now? Pretty fired up, I bet. And here is Hassan Howe on the carry. Peyton Wilson was one of the Wolfpack linebackers that got there. Redshirt freshman. There he is, number 11 from Orange High School in 
Hillsborough, North Carolina. It's funny, Wes, when we talked to the offensive players yesterday, Matthew McKay and Emeka Mezzi, we said if you had to take any of the young guys on defense to start your team with, who would it be? Both of them said Peyton Wilson. Yeah. Out of the flat, Austin Prohl to catch, or Blake Prohl to catch. I knew I'd do it before the day was over. His brother was Austin, his dad was Ricky. All of them really. And all of them apparently can catch the rock. That is enough for a East Carolina first down at the 24. Number 11, Peyton Wilson's interesting who you mentioned. They've shifted him from the three down into that four down defensive end at 6'4. He has the size to play linebacker or on the line of scrimmage. Hmm. Let me get back to Eric a, a point yesterday in our visit with Dave Huxtable about that. Here's Holt Naylor's working left and throwing left, and the catch is made by the big tight end, Bird, who hauls it in near the 45 yard line. I thought Dave Huxtable, guys, yesterday, the Wolfpack defensive coordinator, talking about moving 4 3 to 3 3 5, was talking about, well, we've done a lot of it in red zone situations. We had done some of it, and then when Gibson comes to town to join their staff, now he brings a catalog of things you can do in the package, Roddy, almost expanding it, you know, two, three times if you like. Yeah, absolutely, and it's what he did exclusively at West Virginia. And that is dropped. I think it's Jonathan Johnson. Oh. It is Hatfield, Josiah Hatfield. And the other part about it, Eric and Roddy, is they happen to have an inventory of linebackers and secondary players now that allow them a little more comfort in the 3-3-5, and they don't feel as forced with a personnel standpoint to play maybe a 4-3, that kind of deal. Absolutely, and they bring Tony Gibson over from West Virginia, who exclusively ran the 3-3-5, so he is helping them out with this scheme. But you're right, their personnel is dictating as much as them truly wanting to make a switch on defense. And with Tony Gibson at West Virginia, the chance to catch up with him a little bit before the game and ask him about some of the Big 12 influences coming to this conference. You look at Dino Babers up at Syracuse, Kendall Bryles down at Florida State, Phil Longo, who's now over at uh, UNC. A lot of those Big 12 air raid principles, so why not bring in a guy who played in that league, who saw it on a week-in, week-out basis to bring some different ideas on this defense, and Tony Gibson has certainly done that. Five for 12 on third down are the Pirates. Ayers hit as he throws, incomplete. He took a huge lick from Moorhead, I believe. Barrier was the intended receiver. Well, Wes, you had no idea where guys were coming from here. You see 31 Jarius Moorhead's in the mix, Smith Williams around, but the pocket was heat, heated up, and Holton Ehlers had no choice but to let that ball go early. Falls helplessly to the turf, and that's some of the things that you saw at a couple of games of Tony Gibson's three in the last two years at West Virginia, and what you saw was him heating up the pocket in all kinds of different ways. Mayor Thomas signals four, makes the fair catch. Just inside the 15 of NC State. And we're gonna get a little pushing and shoving behind the play by Josiah Hatfield of East Carolina. So Hatfield shoved Omotosho Audi Omotosho of NC State. Or no, I beg your pardon, it is uh, to Sean Smith, I believe, who was involved in that, and Mike Houston is talking to Hatfield. You'll see this at, up near the ACC logo. There's the shove, and then all of a sudden, a little extra. After the play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. ECU number 88, 15-yard penalty, first down. So you what? The uh, and on this the other is side, a, Deshaun Smith took the charge there. Yeah, sold that thing. By the way, this is a coaching point, not about the penalty, but in listening and visiting with Mike Houston this week and his staff, this has to do with a lot of things they're talking about as a program. Well, he has instilled some toughness and a mentality of not backing down on this ECU team, something that he felt like they were lacking a little bit a year ago. Right. 
And this is a situation that's a teachable moment. Hey, we want you to be aggressive. We don't want you to back down, but you got to do it in a smart way because it may not cost us this game, but down the line as we get into conference play, it absolutely could because every yard matters. So the penalty was enforced from the spot where it occurred. So therefore the ball is at the 29 rather than the 34. And left side goes Ricky Person. Trying to keep his feet and got about four on first down. Mike Houston, incredibly successful head coach. Not only at James Madison where he went 37 and six, and then 22 and two against the Colonial, by the way, winning the 16 FCS National Championship. He's also a guy that won 14 of 25 games at the Citadel and 29 of 37 games at Lenore Ryan. By the way, he starts his ninth year as a head coach today. He has been five times in the previous eight years the coach of the year in the league he coached. Great choice by East Carolina. Three quarters in the books. Three touchdown lead for NC State. Back after this on the ACC Network. We rejoin you from Raleigh. And Tabari Hines, another catch to convert second down to the 41 of NC State. Pretty nice debut in red and white for Tabari Hines, his fourth catch. Carries him to about 75 yards today. Well, we knew the two big slot guys, Thayer Thomas and Tabari Hines, were going to be impact players. And Hines has found pay dirt once. Thayer Thomas has been incredible as well. Three catches for 48 yards. Ricky Person, the running back. McKay, another throw. Thomas wide open at midfield. And that'll be another first down. Wes, I got Thomas's stats wrong. I was looking at the first quarter stats. He had that early in the game. Yeah, that, that is catch a, number six. Six catch, absolutely. Yeah. All of them are double figure yardage, too, Roddy. Yep. And that position, that's the position that Jacoby Myers left. So there were 92 catches from that spot last year that were up for grabs, and mm. Thomas and Hines look up to the task. Okay, and broken up. The intended receiver. It looked like Haram. And instead, Jaquan McMillan made the play, the outstanding corner. Young freshman from West Forsyth High School who was a January enrollee, signed with the Pirates in December, and then through the coaching change, had offers from Syracuse, North Carolina, Louisville, South Carolina, and Tennessee. It's the start on opening day. It's the guy that they're excited about. And off the hands of the intended receiver, Person. Good coverage by Xavier Smith, the weak side linebacker. So NC State won for eight on third down, and now the full 10. And Wes, last year when JMU came in here in this coaching staff, they heated up the pocket. They played a lot of man-to-man. -man. They have done that as well today. And guys like Jaquan McMillan have really held up pretty well. NC State's had to find creative ways to get guys the ball in space to move the football. And here they are pressed up again at the corner position. Okay. A mess. He won a catch against McMillan. First down to the 35. making Kelvin Harmon's number three proud today. Well, Jaquan McMillan is making him work for it. You can't cover this much better than the way McMillan does here. But the big body to Mezzi catches the ball in his hands away from the body. Nothing McMillan can do. McKay, a Mezzi, another one. 15 yards to the 20. Again against McMillan. I mean, these are these are spectacular catches that he is making look routine. McMillan is in great coverage on both of these plays, draped all over him, but Amezi shows why he's one of the top players in this league. 15 the first time, now 14. And Person hit right at the line, Futrell. Ricky Person, 6'1", 220, sophomore from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Tell you what, Matthew.
Matthew McKay, 303 yards of passing today of NC State's 422 total. And now Jordan Houston's plugged into the pistol behind McKay. Here's McKay going to keep it. Near side got a block from Auten Reef and scores. Debut, He's done it a number of different ways. A couple of rushing touchdowns. He's got done it through the air as well. You heard Dave Dorn at halftime. Just talk about the poise. He's been even keel all game through the ups and the downs. They struggled on third down for much of the game. But the reason McKay got the job is because of his ability to respond and do things just like that with his feet. Christopher Dunn's point after. Early here in the fourth, McKay has thrown for one and run for two. This one makes it 31-3 on ACC Network. I got no excuses. I got no excuses. Yeah, I got no. Yeah. First career start for Matthew McKay. Who, as we said at the top, becomes just the second native of Raleigh to start a quarterback for NC State since 1950, joining Daniel Evans back about 13 years ago. And I'll tell you what, pretty impressive in start number one. He would tell you this is a dream of a first start. Mm. Absolutely incredible. Yep, sure he is. Sneed. Call for the fair catch. And so, ball will be brought out and spotted for East Carolina. Brought another look at McKay here. Well, this was a formation in motion that we saw earlier. Jordan Houston in the backfield motions out, and the last time we saw it, they threw the screen to Houston with those three blockers in front. But because ECU was so aggressive, what do they do? They take advantage of the space over here. And once McKay fakes it to the to the right, he gets a pull around on Dylan Ottenry. Gets a great block downfield, and McKay does the rest, but a fantastic master class in seeing something early in the game from Des Kitchings in this offense, marking it down and having a counter. Taylors and the Pirates from their 25. Overshoots the intended receiver, and that is C.J. Johnson, don't forget that fair catch rule that was put in college football a year ago when you fair catch a ball inside the 25-yard line. And the result is a touchback, so therefore the ball goes to the 25. Much as player safety and those type things as anything else, it proved to be very good. Although, Roddy, I'm not sure the strategy we all thought would happen a year ago really happened. Here is Demetrius Mooney's first carry of the day. The Freshman from Forest City. And Mooney got hammered by Peyton Wilson. Wilson, a guy that's had some knee issues in the past. But the coaches absolutely love this guy and think that as he gets more and more experience at this level, he's going to work himself into the rotation in an incredibly deep core of linebackers that this team has. Third now and a dozen for ECU. Ehlers trying to get away and cannot. Murchison gets a stop behind the line. This is the time of the game that defensive linemen love. 31 to 3, time to pin your ears back. And 92 Murchison, James, uh, James Smith Williams creates the pressure. Murchison, the beneficiary, and these guys are teeing off now. Xavier Elias almost met Smith Williams in the backfield as well. Almost got that one. Did the pack. Thayer Thomas backed up to the 32 and a flag. And, well, he got snowed under at the 34. Jonathan Johnson with a good punt cover for East Carolina. And now all of a sudden, one flag gains a friend. Two markers. 
during the return. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 19. Penalty is 10 yards. First down. Timeout. So we'll step aside. 28-point lead for the Wolfpack when we come back to Raleigh. All year long, college football is celebrating its 150th anniversary. And you'll see this college football 150 logo at every major stadium in the country. And at NC State, when you talk about college football's 150, you talk about Ted Brown, Roddy. Uh, Wes, in talking to people around the triangle this week, he is still giving UNC fans nightmares. Only four-time All-ACC player in ACC history, all-time leading rusher in ACC history. That's a record he set in 1978. Mm. Hadn't been touched yet. 4,602 yards in 43 career ball games with the Wolfpack. Great football player out of High Point Andrews High School. And here is Zonovan Knight wearing one digit more, who scored on his first collegiate carry today. He gets three yards. Nine yard touchdown run for Knight. And here with a 28 point Wolfpack lead, the freshman getting some chances. Yep. 17, 81, 23, all the luminaries here at Carter Finley. They had some good ones, man. First round picks, first overall pick. Got an all timer in Phillip Rivers is going to play till he's 50. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll put this one on Eric Wood in a moment, too. McKay a throw. Nice catch out on the perimeter. And that is the uh, sophomore Fisher with the catch. Eric, until you came along, arguably the greatest Buffalo Bills center was a guy named Jim Richard, who was a star at NC State, too. He was, and who the Wolfpack think might be their next best offensive lineman coming through here is now true freshman playing left tackle. They call him Icky Iguanu at left tackle. Interesting to see him in this game with the rest of the starters for the pack. From Providence Day in Charlotte, North Carolina, I Kim Iguanu, and here is Knight. That's a first down, and Bam is Bamming. Come on. He's doing it behind a group that Dave Dorn is really excited about. You see the left side of Guanu over there, driving a guy into the bot into the dirt on the bottom of the pile. But Dave Dorn told us the three freshmen he has on this offensive line: Iguanu, Dylan McMahon, 54, and Timothy McKay, the 17-year-old brother of Matthew McKay. Yeah is as talented a group of freshman linemen that he has been around since he was at Wisconsin. And that is high praise for those guys. A factory press lineman at Madison. Here is Houston, and he gets slung around after an eight-yard pickup. And uh, this is number trail there. That play right there is exactly what you saw last year. A ton of wide zone offense. They've mixed it up. A lot more zone read this year. A little bit more poolers with the mobile Matthew McKay. But you see there the wide zone is coming back as they want to run this clock out on this game. They're going back to their bread and butter. Pistol set for McKay. On second and short. And Houston will get it again. Oh, big lick there. Alex Turner got out of the inside stance and made the play. Eric, it begs also a question. We have seen the running back rotation, Roddy, kind of changed at will here today, whether it's person, whether it's night. Uh, obviously, we're seeing Houston now. Eric, these offensive line guys, I mean, they got to adjust for different backs, don't they? I mean, everybody's a little different, aren't they? Not as much as you would think. These running backs' job is to go where the play is determined that they go. Now, there may be different schemes for different guys, but they're going to block and come off the ball the same way each time, no matter who's at running back. Boy, Houston took out his own guy there. <laughs> is that Skullthorpe? Tell you what, for a little guy, too, Jordan Houston packs a punch. And that is big Joe Skullthorpe. I talked to former offensive line coach at NC State, now at University of Louisville, Dwayne Ledford, about this offensive line and some of the guys that would be stepping in. The guy who he mentioned first was Joe Skullthorpe, a former wrestler who's had a great game today. I love the way he finishes. Well, he's shaking up on the play. We'll take a break. 
here in Raleigh. NC State in control. Well, Matthew McKay's first start in the books, and now we'll get a look at the Wolfpack backup quarterback, and this is Bailey Hockman from Powder Springs, Georgia, who is coming to the ball game after having an outstanding summer camp for Dave Doran in the quarterback competition. And he will hand to Houston, and Jordan Houston on first down will give a yard back to East Carolina on their outstanding pursuit. Chance Purvis was the first purple helmet to reach him, but Bailey Hockman signs up to wear number 16 and buy yourself a patch on your jersey when you do that here, Roddy. Yeah, absolutely do. Russell had Wilson some, had some uh, in-person experiences with Russell yes. Wilson coming down to Atlanta in 2010 and hitting everything that moved with the football. Yep. Second and 11. He still hits a lot of everything that moves. That's true. <laughs> Sweet play. Down the near sideline, banged out of bounds is LaSane. Six foot freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina, touches it for the first time. Say what you want about depth at other places in the ACC. Look at these freshmen that NC State has rolled out there today. You see the speed with LaSane getting on the perimeter, able to turn it up. Bailey Hockman's got the easiest job right now. Just distribute it to these talented guys. All around. 24 yards for Keon Lassane. They also have McMahon, true freshman in at left guard. So getting a lot of freshmen on the field at the end of this game. Yeah, that's Dylan McMahon. Good call there, Eric. And Houston breaks it down to about the 17 as we approach six minutes to play here in the fourth. Remember now, this is Dave Doran was very specific with us yesterday. It might be. The fastest team he's had, it's the youngest team he's had. He's excited about it. He said it's made practice a lot of fun because this team is hungry. None of them have proved anything, particularly on the offensive side of the football. So there's a lot of competition. He has absolutely loved the way this team is prepared. Trent Penix gets the call and a flag is thrown. And we haven't had many unforced errors here today, but usually that means one. Ball start, offense, number 74, five-yard penalty, second down. That's Emmanuel McGirt, who's now moved over, I think, to the right side after starting the day at the left tackle spot. McGirt's biggest play was recovering the uh, McKay fumble deep in the East Carolina red zone, Roddy. Is he get an assist for that? I mean, he should. Well, he and Sculthorpe deserve to split an assist on the on the snap of play later in the touchdown push, right? Yeah, can we can we create a cool name like the Bush Bush for that one? I don't know. It's, 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 it's a good point though. Maybe a little tougher, but he's been all over the place. When you guys give out your O lineman of the game award, it'll be interesting to see if you guys give it to him. <laughs> I'm gonna we're let not, you handle it. All, we're not all giving out any talk. offensive lineman awards on this show unless you tell us to. Hey, that's not what we talked about at the meeting. No, no. <laughs> we, Look, we're deferring. We know exactly where to defer on this show, Roddy. Only one of us is a pro bowler. That's it. Only one of us is a pro bowler. <laughs> I'm getting the rookie treatment right now, I feel like. Why is that? Because you've had to work outside today? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're not going to recognize any offensive lineman all year. No, no, no. That's no, unfortunate. No, no, no. That's, why, that's why you're here, man. You give us the offensive line. Look. I, I would tell you, though, Eric, in all seriousness, NC State's got to be fairly encouraged over 500 yards of total offense today with the way this group has played, given kind of the 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 new nature of the line and, and relative inexperience in some cases, too. As a whole on offense, they only com they only combined for 61 returning starts total. 152 a year ago. So when you look at that number, to have this type of production on offense, especially with the slow start they had, yeah. Dave Dorn's going to be very encouraged from his effort from his guys. Yeah, and most of those starts that you mentioned came from Fed Jackson and Witt. Yeah. So. Yeah, they had 32 of them. Exactly. Kicker Chris Dunn has made his last 16 kicks. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx him. But here he goes trying to make number 17. At least you realize what's out there. 34 yards. Dunn's kick is good. Passed the first test there, Eric. 34-3. 4-14 to go in Raleigh on ACC Network.
when you're a kicker and you make a field goal, you can look like an NBA player coming out of the layup line. He's getting his name announced. Christopher Dunn has got handshakes for everybody. That first one may have been one move too many. After the whoa, I don't know why he went with the sprinkler, but he's got another one coming here, too. It's 34-3, to three, though. Everybody's feeling good, Wes. 34-3. to three. Four and change to go to Raleigh. And no return for the Pirates. Well, East Carolina will be home. Dowdy Ficklin Stadium next Saturday against Gardner Webb out of the Big South FCS program. And it looks like Holt Naylor's day is over. So we might see Reed Herring, a guy who also, and there is Herring, the junior from Millbrook High School here in Raleigh. He and Demetrius Mooney. The backfield combination for East Carolina. And Mooney on first down loses a yard to the 24. Nice play by Wilson again. So while East Carolina welcomes Gardner Webb to Greenville, NC State will bring Western Carolina here to Raleigh next Saturday. And then in two weeks, We'll go to Morgantown to meet Neil Brown and the Mountaineers out of the Big 12 in West Virginia. There's a throw and a catch for Leroy Henley. That'll be a first down at the 35 of the Pirates. And Roddy, we talked about it in the first half. Bears repeating these first four games for NC State. Gives them an opportunity to get off to a very, very fast start. It, it, it does. And you pass the first test here with East Carolina. And there's a lot there that's going to be on film for Dave Dorn to talk about. You look at this team, I think you're impressed with the way Matthew McKay has responded today. You'd like to have been able to run the football a little bit more consistently, but defensively, he's got to be extremely pleased with the way this defense has made adjustments, particularly with the new primary setup, this 3-3-5. That Dave Huxtable is running the pass, takes some of the Tony Gibson influences, bring those blitzes and this team looks like a team that could contend to be that number two team in the Atlantic after Clemson. Crossing route for Hatfield and that'll be a first down in the 47. Well, Josiah Hatfield another catch in the throw game and Isaiah Stallings out there the redshirt junior from Fayetteville North Carolina. Shot here, Herring and a up the ladder catch. And East Carolina goes downfield, and that's Omatosho. We give other guys a chance to play late in games, and they go out and make plays. That is a spectacular catch leaning back by Omatosho. Grad student from Plano, Texas, 37 yards. First and 10 at NC State, 16. Herring up in the pocket, and he'll dive inside the 15, and Herring slow to his feet after the tackle. Herring coming in, getting down. Ball came out on that one. Sure did. It was a clear recovery, but Spellacy to center. Gets it here to Herring. Second down and overshoots the intended receiver, and that was Lewis, I believe. Tonight, don't forget after Virginia Pittsburgh, all ACC scores, highlights, breakdowns, post-game interviews from the day and night on the gridiron. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. 10.30 Eastern, following Virginia Pittsburgh right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. I told you defense linemen love this situation. James Smith-Williams back in to rush the passer here on this third down. <laughs> There's a throw offline, and boy, Herring had Tanner Engel bearing down, and also Lias. By the way, Xavier Lias has been around the ball a little bit today. He certainly has. 
We've seen depth at a number of positions, defensive line being one of them. And Xavier Elias getting an opportunity, getting some love from his coach, Dave Dorn. Tell him, hey, half step faster there. You may get you one, young fella. 31 yard drive for Verity, who hit today from 47 for their only points and missed from 52. Try is away from Verity, and it is good. 31 yard kick. 34 6, our new score in Raleigh on ACC Network. Well, the field goal, Verity gets East Carolina their second score of the day, 34 to 6 for Mike Houston's team in his debut as the field boss in Greenville. And the rebuild of the Pirate football fortunes. Meanwhile, NC State, 9 and 4 a year ago. Dave Doran in this program. He starts year 7 today. He's won every home opener and on the way to winning his 7th and NC State's 10th in a row in terms of home openers. And the 31st meeting between the Pirates and the Pack. There'll be no return by Houston. That ball reaches the end zone. Don't forget, coming up 4 o'clock Eastern, week one of ACC football rolls on. Virginia Tech, Boston College from Alumni Stadium at Chestnut Hill. Looks like they've got a beautiful day there. And nightfall in the Steel City. ACC primetime football presented by Geico, Virginia, and Pittsburgh. You said earlier now, tackling will be a premium for Bud Foster's Hokies today, who certainly want to fare better than they did as a unit a year ago. And number two from Boston College is going to make sure that you are ready to be physical. And how about what Steve Adazio told you guys on the show the other day on Packer and Durham? We can flat throw it? Yeah. If they, and and I, I indicated to Mark that if they can flat throw it with the way they're going to hammer you with the run game. It's going to be scary. Yeah. And, and again, BC a little bit like NC State, a lot of experience on defense, experience back on offense, although they lose a the first round pick in the line in Lindstrom. They've got to get some guys ready to play up front, but you know the, the methodology's not changing. Well, look, if Steve Adazio tells me that he's not worried about his offensive line, which he has said. Yeah. And I'm not worried about that offensive line because that dude knows line play. And he says he's got some dudes up front. But Virginia Tech, Bud Foster's last season, you'd expect that defense to play a little inspired this year for Coach Foster. By the way, Hockman here, it's going to be a couple touches of the knee. And uh, this ball game will be in the books. And NC State will start the season 1-0. and And they will beat East Carolina for the 18th time in 31 meetings. Dave Doran and Mike Houston, a handshake. A lot of respect between those two guys and their programs. And Coach Doran and ECU off to a good start. Ten straight home opening wins, seven straight. Under the man from Kansas as he starts season seven here in Raleigh with a win. And an impressive win too, Roddy, at 34-6. He's got to be impressed with the way his defense adjusted after ECU was able to move the ball early in the game. Made some adjustments and really kept Holt Nailers off balance. And then offensively, Matthew McKay being able to stay steady. Struggled on third down early in this game, but able to hit a couple big plays to Ricky Person, Tabari Hines down the stretch. Matthew McKay, 300 plus yards passing in his first start as the ECU quarterback. And I think Eric Woods got coach. What you got, Forsey? Coach, talk to me about your young guys today, them stepping up in this big win. Yeah, I was proud of them. I thought Matt McKay in his first start did a lot of good things for us. We got a lot of guys, their first snaps today, and they responded really well. Talk to me about Matthew McKay. Really impressive first start for him. A lot of poise. You could tell he was ready. He told me not to worry about anything, and I'm glad he lived up to that. I was really proud of him. Absolutely. Congrats on the win. Thanks a lot. Go Pack. All right, Eric. Thanks. And thanks to Dave Doran. Unbelievable performance for Roddy Jones, Eric Wood, our producer Chris Damiani, our director Adam Bryant, and our wonderful ACC Network crew, Wes Durham. Stay tuned. The huddle is next. Back in the studio for all the latest on ACC football. So long from Raleigh. NC State 34, East Carolina 6, the final. Welcome to the postgame show. You know the coach, Mark Richt.
Eric McLean, oh, EJ baby. Manuel, so 34-6, Matt McKay. We didn't know yeah. much about him coming into this game. Biggest right. takeaway for you? Well, he started slow, uh, and you know, even on third downs, they were 0-6 to start the game, and then he hit hit Hines for a third down conversion. The very next play, he hit a, hit a long ball for a touchdown. He was struggling with the deep ball early, uh, but then uh, after that 0-6 start on third down, they went four out of six on uh, first on third down conversions and kind of changed the momentum of the game. Yes, indeed, Coach. Once McKay was able to settle his feet, relax, you know, kind of get some confidence after he made a couple throws, started throwing a number three, Emeka Amizi, one of his best receivers. Sure. Uh, that guy was extremely reliable throughout the entire game. Um, you know, he, he, he had some great numbers. I mean, he rushed for two touchdowns, another one touchdown thrown in the air, so had a great had 300 game. 300 yards pass, and Amizi had seven catches. Yeah. Had a big day. Dude. How good do you think ECU is? Where is that team in the uh, they're, they're, they're still learning, finding their way. They, they, you know, struggled mightily at the end of last season, got a new coach. Starting to try to implement those things. I did go to their uh, spring practices. I was invited to speak at their coaches clinic, and uh, I coached there actually one year in 1989. But uh, you, you you could see, and again, I talk about body types a lot. It was kind of like your body running into his body <laughs> a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I remember. But um, you know, I, I think that NC State outclassed him athletically, and and I think the coaching on both sides was pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. What'd you see? Biggest takeaway? You know, really, I think just what we talked about at halftime. Uh, if he can slow down McKay and really just settle in as a passer, which what, what we saw. His guys made up, got huge catches for him. A lot of tough conversions that those guys made. Thomas, six receptions, 83 yards. Just a great day for your first start. It's got to feel good. Build that confidence, especially at that position. Any, anytime you could throw over three bills, man, yeah. that's pretty good. So it's a good uh, boat of confidence for him going into the next game. You know, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> we don't have McKay yet. We're about to have McKay. Go. Yeah, no, I was just saying that uh, one of the biggest turning points of the game might have been when it was not targeting against Turner Ingle, number 10 for yep. the oh, defense. Yeah. He Huge. played his tail off. He did. And, uh, but, be, you know, the early in the game, it looked like he was going to be out uh -huh. on that targeting, but they, they turned it around and said no. We're, we're starting to know NC State as this defensive line NFL factory. Everyone, Dave Dorn, is just like, yeah. They're never going to be able to replace those guys. Well, they did. They yeah. did. They did. Uh, NC State defensively today. What stood out? Yeah, they look good. And I remember just in my playing days, they were always one of the hardest teams to prepare for just because they had so many guys running in and out, very similar to what we saw today. I think, Coach, you, you had one of those guys. He got in there, had a sack. He, he was playing his air guitar. Uh, yeah, Murchison. Really like Number Watson. 92, Murchison. Yep, exactly. he had, well, he first he had some tackles for loss in the run, and then he finally got his sack. <laughs> you know, when the, when the interior D linemen get the sack, they it's always a good day. They, they, they love to, they they love to celebrate that for sure. <laughs> what, what specifically was so hard about preparing for NC State? Just the defense? number of guys, you know, because everybody had a different move, a different skill set, and you're just calculating these numbers in your head. All right, I got 50, I got 92, I, and and knowing what they do, you know, as offensive linemen, you want to study that. So when you have a plethora of opponents that you're going to have to go against, it's just it can be a little overwhelming. I think that's what we saw today. Those guys having all the moves in the world. Great coaching. I was going to say, those, the to. technique of those guys to just yeah. literally extend the guy, just pull him right push him away, yep. still rush the passer. Yeah. Um, I think Murchison got credited for a sack because he, if you saw the play, he was actually <clears> working, <throat> working. The quarterback right. ends up moving up in the pocket yeah. right into Murchison's lap. I mean, that's some great coaching, some great play by those guys Absolutely. on the D-line. How about Big Eric Wood? We have Eric Wood. Come on. Sidelines for good. him. Right great. sounded good. West uh, sounded great. It's awesome, man. Wood as the quarterback. What a game he just had, McKay. Go ahead, Eric. Matthew, congrats on your first start, first win. How'd you feel out there today? I felt great. I just trusted my teammates, just knowing that they were going to get open and make plays. My ball, my job was just to get the ball in their hands. What was working best for you out there today? I was just finding the easy completions. Don't, don't try to do too much and just find an open receiver. Good deal. Were you nervous at all before this first start? No, not really. I just a little butterflies, but I just trusted my preparation. And I felt like I wanted to just go execute. That's great. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Appreciate it. Some fantastic performances. We'll try to do our part. It's all ACC, and we've got a whole lot to talk about this Saturday night. It'll be really interesting to see how Florida State responds, a team that always seems to respond week one. That's North Carolina State. Coach Doran always seems to have his guys ready to compete against the rival East Carolina. Beautiful day out there, and they are ready for some football opening drive. First and goal for ECU 
Holt Nailers runs the end zone. Then a fumble is forced by Tanner Engle near the goal line. Fumble recovered by NC mm. State. Huge Moorhead, play. Moorhead, the defense, making a play. Yeah, dude. you know, ECU just went straight down the field. Seemed like they had all the momentum in the world. EC or NC State, excuse me, huge turnover here. And then they turn around and drive straight down the field and score themselves. Zonovan, they call him. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. bam Knight <laughs> takes it in for the touchdown. The freshman scores on his very first college play. NC State 7 0. Second quarter, Ehlers looks to scramble, puts the pass up for grabs. And this one's intercepted by Chris Ingram. NC State again comes up with another big turnover. How about this defense? Look at that guys? pressure, man. These guys have been. Pressuring the quarterback all day. This is a great play by Ingram coming up, taking the ball from another receiver. It's big time. First minute left in the second half. NC State second to goal. Matthew McKay. Uh oh, was uh -oh, sharp. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> Not how they drew it up. Heads up play by McKay right here. What got, happened here? Gotta love the ad lib right there. The quarterback sees that the running back goes the opposite way. <laughs> Best thing you tie as a quarterback, just follow the running back. That's your lead blocker, you baby. Lead right in there for a <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> That's how they draw it up, guys. That's how they draw it up. Better be lucky than good. NC State 17-3, third quarter, same score. NC State first and ten. Sweet. Tabari Hines finds himself wide open. NC State stays ahead 24-3. You know, really, this was at a point where at halftime we were sitting here saying McKay just needs to calm down, settle down. He hit two big pass plays in a row, and you saw that one connecting for the end zone. McKay sees an opening, his second rushing touchdown of the day. And we have West Durham, Roddy Jones, postgame. Story coming into the week, Roddy Jones was Matthew McKay's first career start, and the story coming out of the game, Matthew McKay. Well, he threw for over 300 yards, Wes, and he spread the love all over the field. He started with the receivers, hitting Thayer Thomas early a number of times, getting him involved in the slot. Then he went to his big guy on the outside, Emeka Mezzi. But he also hit running backs as well. You see Ricky Person up the sideline with a big play down the field. That wasn't the only big play he threw for. Down to Barry Hines as well. The transfer went from Wake Forest to Oregon. Now to NC State doing it for another ACC school. But this is what Matthew McKay brings is different. The ability to do it on the ground too with his feet, he was fantastic. Well, and the Wolfpack builds a lot of confidence, not just for McKay, but a young offensive line. And a little bit of a shift change on defense as well tonight. Yeah, a little bit of a different look. They went to a 3-3-5 defense, getting three linebackers on the field. They love their linebacker depth. And this defense only allowing six points made some great adjustments after ECU was able to move the ball early. Ten straight home opening wins for NC State. All right, fellas. Well, it looks like uh, Coach Doran found his guy at quarterback. Yeah, Matthew absolutely. McKay, Hunter, pretty sharp. Yeah, he he looked great out there today, and I think it was it was fun because we were talking earlier uh, about what he would look like. You know, I heard a lot about him running with his legs and, and making a lot of plays on the move. But you really wanted to see pocket. him run. I felt like I did. I wanted to see him run. I, I wanted to see him, uh, you know, show that and show what he could do. But man, he tore it up with his arm. He had 343 mm -hmm. total yards, three total touchdowns, uh, and really just seeing. A great quarterback in a first start you know I know it's ECU and, and they might not have the, the greatest year this year but to do that on air is impressive so I think yeah. he really showed composure and led his team to victory and an, inex an inexperienced quarterback's best friend is a great defense a defense that can rush the passer that can create turnovers and that's exactly what NC State's defense yeah. did today yeah speaking of defense Tanner Engel you kept hearing about him number 10 made all kind of plays he had eight tackles two pass breakups he had a one forced fumble. He had a quarterback Woo. hit. Okay, but he also had a targeting yeah. that they called on the field. And if they don't overturn it, he, he doesn't make all those plays. He's gone. Yeah, and so I think him being able to stay in that game, which I was think the right we should call. talk about that a little bit, just to explain to some people at home the rule change and how it's changed. You know, we went to to this uh, referee seminar, referee clinic, where they really broke it down for us. Referees now have to prove that targeting occurred before they could just say it stood. It, it stands, right. Right. you know, if, if it's it looks like it, sure. now, I really can't tell, but we called it. It's going to stand. Players are still ejected. Now, if it's not 100 percent, without a doubt, targeting, right, they can reverse it or they have to reverse it, which well, I think is great for the players. Tell me this, guys, because I think a lot of people watching this game, North Carolina State fans out there, they want to be happy with the win, their 10th straight home opening win. Right. But was it because East Carolina's not that good of a football team or 
North Carolina State's just a really good team out of Gates. I don't think you look at it that way. Okay. And, you know, a win is a win. At the end of the day, it's the first game of the season. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be clean. You got a brand-new quarterback in McKay. It was his right. first time getting out there starting. He got his feet wet, got some confidence, was able to run right. the ball, throw the ball. So you don't focus on who the opponent was. A win is a win. I think when you see what NC State lost last year, 3,000-yard passer, 1,000-yard rusher, two 1,000-yard receivers, and some beast on defense. Yes, sir. Right, some and beast. they came out here and didn't miss a beat. So I think you should be very happy with that. Uh, the 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 defensive line, you that they have at defensive tackle and defensive end, it's right back. They're still producing. Murchison, and the, coach, you were loving his William Smith. Yeah, they gave well, some good know, coaching. I called Coach Doring and I wanted. I said, tell me something good about this team. He said, I love these two guys. Yeah. I'm talking about Murchison, number 92, and uh, William Smith, who was 39 last year, went to number one this year. And both of them had a sack today just to get things yeah. started. Big Merch out there playing his air guitar. Yeah, he was. Yeah, man. Tore it up. It. You were loving I the air guitar. I loved it. He earned it, too, bro. He earned it all night. Saw too. it again tonight.